I think it's the anointing. Hey, I wanted to read you something. Uh, I uh, scratched out the last name on the medical report here. Well, uh, this uh, friend of ours, he's been uh, supporting the ministry for six, seven years. He works at the airlines, American Airlines, I think. And he's got a physical job out there. Well, anyway, he was, uh, he, he bent over to pick somebody up that had fallen down or something. Anyway, he, he hurt his neck. And uh, I guess they've got really bad uh, uh, sick leave benefits over there. Only lasts like a month or less, something like that. Well, anyway, here's the medical report here. And uh, he had to have surgery on his neck by Dr. John Wanobo. Uh, the surgery date is March 8th. Right here. And uh, diagnosis, uh, left C7 radiculopathy. Left C6, C7 herniated disc. Post-operative diagnosis, same. Uh, procedure performed. C6, C7 anterior cervical discectomy with instrumentation and fusion. Use of audiograph, use of allograph, whatever that is, use of microscope. None. No assistant. General anesthesia. Patient is a 50-year-old male presented with severe left arm pain, numbness, and weakness. Failed conservative treatment. He was found to have giant herniated disc at six, C6, C7. And we prayed for the poor guy. He had titanium, a titanium disc put in there and a fusion up here. And uh, for years, I used to work as a rehabilitation counselor, and I worked with dozens of these people over the years. And they all blew out, they all did heavy labor, carpenters, you know, pipe fitters, iron workers, different guys. And most of them were males. And a lot of, some females, I used to have a lot of repetitive motion injuries, carpal tunnel, that kind of thing. And uh, they would come in for counseling, and none of them could go back to heavy work. It was routine. Uh, they would have to be retrained. They would go through uh, vocational rehabilitation, sometimes through their workers' comp carrier, uh, sometimes through the State Department of Voc Rehab, and they had to get retrained to do lighter work. They couldn't go back to heavier work. Well, this guy's got a severe neck injury with a fusion and instrumentation. His, uh, uh, he calls me and says, hey, my sick leave has run out. And so the bills are piling up. So we had to pray. Here's the American Airlines discharge notice. Uh, confirm, I confirmed my patient been under my care since 2-26-18. That's the date of injury, practically. He went right in from the emergency room to see this doctor. He is discharged to go back to work March 24th, 2018. He had surgery on March 8th. Patient is discharged of full duty release without work restrictions. That's impossible. I had a lot of patients that had strained backs, never went back to regular work. Back strains, couldn't go back to work. There it is. I said, can you send me a copy of that so I can put it in the healing box out in the hall? I, I, I crossed his last name off. I left the doctor on there. If you needed a good doctor, I've got one here. So one in bowl. I don't know where he's from. Listen up. Uh, can your daughter be healed? Can my daughter be healed? Yeah. 
that's one of the biggest miracles we've ever had here. God knew his stuff was running out. This is a sick leap. Good Lord knows what you need. <laughs> Nobody goes back to regular work after a surgery like that. Not in my experience. And I have a lot of experience in that field. I used to do rehabilitation work for years, working with injured people. God's a good God. Yeah, he, he killed that one. And I got proof of it. All right. Uh, kind of interesting Bible study for you tonight. Kind of a little bit of a downer, but it ends up good. Starts out bad, it ends up good. All right, there's the radio programs. Uh, this uh, teaching tonight, I sent it over to Kelly to uh, upload, and it was corrupted. So I had to redo it quickly in my office, and I'm not sure it's, it's going to work right. <laughs> no. If it doesn't work right, I'll just ad lib it and just filter on through it. It happens. Say so my uh, radio shows are no longer on. The one they used to be on, they switched servers, and this is my new one. You can just pick it up off the website. Uh, Saturday, I believe, is our healing room. Is this the second Saturday of the month? This is the first Saturday? Okay. Strike that. It's next Saturday we're having our healing rooms, and all the ones we've had so far have been booming. Lots of healings and deliverance. This has been going fantastic. It really has been. If you switch over from Google to Good Search, you can help us out. They'll pay us while you surf, surf the net. You've got to put in Hardcore Christianity. Do you shop at Amazon? Nobody? I do. Uh, my wife does. Uh, most people in the country do. If you go to smileamazon.com, put in our, our name, they'll donate money to us for free. You know, it doesn't cost you a penny. They'll just donate every time you buy something. They give us 1.2% of it. It adds up, you know. Particularly if you're a shopaholic. We have any shopaholics here? Raise your hand. <laughs> no? Okay, well, it's not going to add up that quick. <laughs> oh, well. Well, uh, summer's coming. I'm trying to figure out a way to get these utility bills paid. That's my main concern here. All right. We have four YouTube channels, and we just developed another one. Didn't we? What's it called? Thursday night prayer. Our live stream uh, canceled their service, so we don't have live stream. Any when does it go into effect? May. In May? Okay. In May, we go to uh, Thursday night teaching. We'll no longer be on live stream. It'll be on uh, your, our new YouTube channel. Okay? It is ending in, uh, no, in second, about three weeks. What's today, buddy? Six. Six. Day six. All right. Let's make it four weeks. And we'll, it'll be on YouTube. All right. This isn't starting out well, but it picks up later. Okay. <laughs> All right. Those are the miracle lists. Send me an email. And I'll send you those, those uh, self-deliverance lists. They work fantastic. They don't work very well if you don't use them. They're terrible. They're a total failure abominably bad, terrible. So when you get the email, you'll the first thing you'll do is have a demonic shock. Boom! You'll get hit. It's, it's demons. They freak when they see it. I mean, they're just poof. Loaded depends. Bang! You can't do that. That's too much. That's crazy. No, you take it one step at a time. You do one at a time. That's all it is. Don't let that initial shock and fear leap into your face. It hits you right in the face. I know everybody, I, they know exactly what happens. And some people look at it and don't even read number one. They won't even read it. They're so scared. Okay? You chill yourself out and just go to number one. It's a deliverance list that works. It's all scriptural. Okay? And it will deliver you. It works. But if you run from it in panic, uh, then it, that will fail. Okay? YouTubers, you know what you need to do? Open up your terror cell next week in your church. Okay? Get that thing going and start terrorizing the devil. 
Hey, thank you for your donation. Summer's coming up. Utility bills. God bless you for helping us. You can also donate on the website. Uh, last chance. <laughs> Tax day is. Yeah, yeah. That's that's America D Day. That's when things really go bad. You have to file your taxes. Okay. Do not screw around the IRS. This is all off the record. <laughs> if you owe money, it's better to pay it than have them come ask you about it. Because they are not loving Christians over at the IRS. Uh-uh. No. And they have Gestapo-like powers. They can call your bank and say, I want everything he, they have immediately shut down. They can call your mortgage company. They can call Jehovah. Pay your taxes. All right. Anybody in this section ever had somebody just suddenly, unexpectedly drop dead? Boom. Who was it? Who was it? How did he die? He OD'd? Friend overdosed? How old was he? 48. 48 year old friend. 28 year old friend overdosed. Anybody in this section? How old was your dad? Uh, I think 66. 66. When did he die of? It might have been a brain aneurysm. They don't know. 66-year-old dad died of... <laughs> Anybody over here? You did? What happened to you? Too many to count. Too many to count. Ooh. What's the main one? Were they all suicides? You're kidding. When was that? Um, that was in 2005. Oh, mass suicides. And where was it at? It was like a mass. It, you know, one goes and then the whole tribe just starts. Oh, really? Well, when was that? 2005. 2005. Wow, that's horrible. Yes, ma'am. Two overdoses? How, how old were they? Fifty. Oh, shit. He's almost eighty. Wow. Okay. Now, well, you never know when somebody's going to go. You really don't. And uh, nobody in the Bible is promised tomorrow here. If you're a born again Christian, you are promised eternity there, but nobody's promised tomorrow here. Are we? No, there's no there's no verses that says uh, I'm you're guaranteed to live X amount of days or years. It's not there. Okay, it's a walk of faith. In the book of Ecclesiastes, King Solomon had tanked. This guy started out so great, so fantastic. He had the gift of wisdom. Supposedly, he was the smartest person on the planet Earth. He had supernatural divine wisdom. He had a good heart. He was a good person. Jehovah warned him. He said, hey, don't get on Christian Mingle. <laughs> Dude, don't do it. Don't do it. Okay, you don't know who you're getting on Christian Mingle or dating site. He said, listen, uh, don't start dating these hot babes from Egypt and all these other places because they will lead you astray. They will lead you into the world of demons. They will lead you into idolatry. You will die a miserable, sick human being. And he tried to get around it. Instead of dating on Christian Mingle, he married him. And that doesn't help. Demons don't care whether you're married or not. They're still, they're still there. Marrying the person doesn't change their venue at all. And uh, he had hundreds of wives. 
Hundreds of them, right? So the only good thing about having hundreds of wives, it's hard to cheat. Because if you're cheating with somebody, you're probably married to them. If you have six, <laughs> you're six or seven hundred wives. There's only 365 days in a year. So let's say you've got supersized hormones and giant kahunas. Let's say you've got it all. <laughs> and you're going two and three times a day. Just do the math there. That's going to be a pretty tiring year. <laughs> That's not including having to judge Israel and make all these incredible decisions because if you're very intelligent, everybody wants to talk to you and they need answers. So to put it mildly, Solomon was a busy guy. Busy. Yes. And uh, the more he accumulated these caring, loving spouses, the happier he got. Well, <clears throat> he got so bad and he, had, he got chucked full of so many demons, he wrote a book in the Bible. And it's in our Bible. What's the name of it? Yes. He's, he's backslidden and demon possessed now, and he's down. Okay. The opposite occurred when he wrote the book of Proverbs. He was on his game. This was before the devil got to him, and that book is incredible, just fantastic. It's if you haven't read Proverbs, man, you you've really hurt yourself. That thing is. A stroke of divine genius spectacular to say the least and Ecclesiastes then is at the opposite end of it let's let's take a quick look at it one life one life and one hope as you know from the testimonies we've already received tonight everybody has an appointment an appointment to die correct God has appointed a date for you or you appointed it now that person over there was talking about suicides in Minnesota well that was your appointment you chose the appointed time not God's time you chose it yourself and you killed yourself uh, that guy's friend overdosed okay that was not his appointed time to die he appointed it himself and did it himself okay? either way Somebody chose you to die, and you're going to die. And after that, the Bible says, "Crisis" is the Greek word for judgment there. It means to make an evaluation. Every human being is evaluated after they die. Every single one of them. God looks at your life from beginning to end, and he evaluates everything. Takes a look at it. If you become a born-again Christian, from that point on, is evaluated the previous point is gone <clears throat> I thought I was at a heathen convention uh, what happens is if you're a sinner your entire life from the age of accountability here to the moment you drop dead either by God's appointment or yours whoever killed you that entire period of time is evaluated by God and it's mentioned in Revelation chapter 20 and that's called the great white throne judgment if here you get saved and born again well from that moment on you're evaluated in another venue okay? judgment seat of Christ right every Christian is Croesus evaluated from the time they're born again till the time they drop dead right that's what the Bible says let's see how Solomon's doing with all of his demons and his depression and everything here's what he says he says a lot of really interesting things in this book remember your Creator in the days of your youth while the evil days do not come and the years do not draw near when you shall say I have no pleasure in them what's he talking about there <clears throat> he uses a lot of symbolism in this section of text it's really interesting he's talking about the crappy life of old age yep. for most people uh, one old person's here uh, <laughs> for most people 
old age sucks. Okay? Nothing working anymore. You got ED, you got LT, you got a pain in the joints. You don't have the energy you had before. Stuff is drooping that wasn't drooping before. It is lousy. 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 Your youth is your best years. And everybody always says, oh, those were the good old days. There are no good old days. <laughs> what they really mean is when I was young. When I was young is everybody's good old days because you were healthy. Uh, you had the world by the tail. Oh, everything was so exciting. Things were new. You know, you get old, 60s, 70s, 80s. Oh, man. It's another story. All right, let's go on to this uplifting teaching. <laughs> In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble. He's using symbolic language here. What he's mean, I put in what he actually means here. When the arms of the body tre start trembling and the strong men bow, bend and bow. That's what he's talking about. He's talking about progressive old age what sucks even more is human beings here in America who don't take care of themselves and enter old age then it becomes a gasping nightmare the body starts to turn on you faster than it would normally turn on you the aches accelerate the weaknesses accelerate the exhaustion accelerates everything gets worse as your diet stinks as your exercise goes down as you you don't get the right sleep you don't do this you know that your body starts almost like oh my god I got to get out of here now don't raise your hands this is what happens to people <laughs> folks I realize this may shock you but your arms are, now he's talking about old age here he says, the grinders cease. What's he talking about? Your teeth. Your, your teeth don't work. They get filed off. They fall out uh, because they are few. Some of the teeth fall out. And those that look out the window are darkened. You can't see right anymore. So I wear glasses. You got to wear weaning glasses. Some people have to wear Coke bottle. I mean, it's a drag. It stinks. Getting old stinks with a capital S. Trust me on that. Just take my word for it. It's no fun. It's not fun, particularly if you're here in America and you don't take care of yourself. It's really super unfun then. And he's talking about old age here. And you can see it in our society continuously. Here's a guy here, Muhammad Ali, probably the most interesting, one of the most interesting Americans that ever lived. This guy was an incredibly interesting person, and he deteriorated. I'm talking about ugly deteriorated. And when he was young, he was the picture of health. Here's another guy that's struggling. A lot of these rock stars don't age well. You know, when you're up all night, you're sleeping with 25 women, you got X amount of drugs, you're in a coke party, now you're on heroin. It, getting older then accelerates again as your body falls apart with drugs and late nights and alcohol and so on you these people are just flat worn out and things don't go well for you you get pooped these people are multi-millionaires all of them they're all by normal standards rich and they can't stop this process they could have any plastic surgery they want a regular person like us we can't do that we can't just go out and have 15 plastic surgeries that costs a lot of money your insurance covers it. Hey, you got to have a nice savings account to have 15 surgeries. Not these guys. They just write a check and boom. The eyes, write a check, nose. Doesn't matter. It's all good. And they look like garbage. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, Ecclesiastes is right. This is what happens when people get on there. Here's a guy that just, his, somebody looked like he pipe bombed his face. Now, this is not working. <laughs> But be, when he was young, boy, this guy was like drop-dead gorgeous guy, you know, a beautiful guy. 
Uh, here's a teen star that just went to pot. And I mean, literally went to pot. And then, wow, this guy, I don't know what happened to him. I think he got hit by a truck. But you can see that age, even when you're a multi-millionaire, you cannot stop this process that, that Adam set in place and Satan set in place as the human body deteriorates. And the body that was your best friend when you were young turns on you when you get old and you trusted your body when you were young it healed quickly it, it would work with you things would get better and then when you get old you come up with the same things and and nothing's working anymore your body's not responding it's not healing right driving you nuts oh this guy's i believe he's already died now check this up ecclesiastes 12 the door shall be shut in the streets when the sound of grinding is low, he's talking, again, figurative language here. He's talking about old people who, uh, who uh, you know, are deteriorating. They can't hear straight. Their teeth are falling out. They're gumming their food. Of course, nowadays in America, you know, dental science has progressed dramatically. I mean, it's great now. You can get dentures and different things. But back in those days, they didn't have dentists. So, so you'd have to gum the thing and your gums used to get like, you know, the bottom of your feet. So you could actually chew food with your gums. It would get, what's the term? Calluses. calluses. You'd get gums on your calluses and you could, you could chew rocks. No matter. It says Ecclesiastes 12, well, when, they, when they shall be afraid of that which is high as you get older, you start to have uh, this concept of your mortality. And you don't have that when you're in your 20s or 30s. It's not there. You're not thinking about, wait a minute here. Uh, hmm, I'm going to be dead soon. And what's going to happen to me after I'm dead? You don't think about that in your 20s. Man, you got the world by the, by the handle. I mean, you're, you're on it when you're 25 years old. You ain't got no problem. You ain't got no time for this. No problem. And fears about the journey. As you get older, people begin to wonder, what in the God's name is going to happen to me after I die? Where do I go? Where do people go after they die? What's that death process like? How do I, how do I lift out of my bone? Where do I go? Who takes me? You have all these different questions about dying that you don't have when you're a teenager. The thoughts don't, don't click in then. And now Solomon is nearing the end of the road for his miserable life, and he ruined his life. And now he's thinking about all these things, and he's sharing them with us, which is, I thought, very interesting. Uh, I appear to be the only one, though. The almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden. Again, symbolic language. Your hair, which looks great when you're young. You know, I had great hair when I was young. Did you ever see those old Kmart pictures? Nobody? <laughs> They'll put the fear of God in you when you go back and look at them. Everybody went to Kmart and got a family portrait. It was everybody, in the, everybody in the country did. Everybody did. Just back in the seventies. Say, so, oh yeah, you had to have a Kmart portrait. And everybody looked at it. And go, well, that's great. And then twenty-five years later, you look at it. Boom, projectile vomiting. You can't believe that you're that ugly and your family's that ugly. You can't even believe it. It's shocking. And and. The photo is now yellow. On top of you being rump roast ugly, you're yellow and ugly in a Kmart. You, nobody, nobody had this stuff? Dude, I had, I had several. I don't know what's wrong with you people. Yeah, your gr hair goes gray. It falls out. Can you imagine that? Your hair falls out. Oh, what a drag that is. Can you believe your hair falls out? Stupid. I couldn't believe it. I'm not even Joe. I'm in my 60s. I'll, I'll just admit it. I don't have any problem with it. I, uh, my wife's in the office and she keeps the door shut. She doesn't listen. She turns the volume thing off. <clears throat> I'm not even joking. I'm in my 60s and I had to trim my pubic hair the other day. I couldn't believe it. 
just thought of doing that when I was a teenager never even crossed my mind. Never crossed my mind. Not even a thought of it. I mean, I couldn't believe it. I, I got out to take a shower, looked down, boop, what is that? I said, this is unbelievable. So I snuck out in the kitchen. She's in bed asleep. I, nobody was going to watch this. Uh, got the scissors out of the drawer in the kitchen. I thought, who cares? You know, and boop, boop, boop. Yeah, your hair grows like crazy down here, and then when you get a, it thins out up here. It doesn't make any sense. Old age is not fun, is what I'm trying to explain how this works. Old age is not fun. And Solomon's going over here because he's now entering the twilight of his years, and he's contemplating his life. And it's very interesting how he words it now he puts it. It's very fascinating uh, to me anyway. And it says, grasshopper shall be a brain. What he's talking about is you get tired and you can't even carry anything anymore. You know, when I was young, people would say to you, uh, and you didn't want to hear it, uh, hey, are you doing anything Saturday? As soon as you heard that, fear of God went through you. Because you knew what they were going to ask you. Somebody's moving. Well, when you're 19 years old, that's not a traumatic issue. Now, it's a near heart attack attack. If somebody asks me if I'm doing things Saturday, I'll say anything, even suicide. That's not, so I got to get out of it because at my age, I can't move anybody anymore. I'm lucky getting myself out of that office over here. Why? Well, here he is. He taught, man, you just get weak. Your body gets weak. You can't lift what you did. You can't bend like you did. You can't go anywhere like you did. You don't want to move anybody. You can't move anybody. You'll blow your disc out, and then you'll end up going to see Dr. Wadabigo here for a neck fusion and instrumentation. That's moving somebody from Oak Street to 3rd Avenue. You can't do it anymore. What's he talking about? He, you get weak when you get older, he says. Desire shall fail. Life's passions. What's that mean? Yeah, the usual. <clears throat> you get into your retirement years. Oh, they're the greatest years, aren't they? Nope. You got ED. You got LT. Right? Uh, you got VD. <laughs> and you don't have anybody to share it with. When you're younger, none of that stuff matters. I mean, you don't have these things. You're fine. You get older. Oh, my God. What is all this stuff? Everything changes is what he's saying when you get older. You're not the person you used to be. And it's some people really have a tough time adjusting to that. They really do, particularly movie stars. And that's why they get all that plastic surgery. That's why they're on the special pills and everything. And because man goes to his what? Now he's talking about, wait a minute. I see, I see my end. I can see it now. I'm not going to live forever. I have an ending, and it's not that far away. That's what he's saying. And after I'm gone, you start thinking about what? Yeah, there's Frank Sinatra. It doesn't matter how rich you are, how famous you are, how great you are. What Adam did to us and what Satan did to us, you can't get out of it. You are going to. This thing is going to stop. And it's going to stop soon if you become an older person and the mourners will then go around down the streets. No matter who you are, no matter what you are. And we went through it here just before the service. Several people die unexpectedly. Some people OD'd. Some people are murdered. Doesn't matter. <clears throat> you either go when your appointed time is by God or you appoint the time yourself and go earlier. Okay? You can appoint your own time by not taking care of your health. Uh, three or four people said somebody OD'd. That's not God's time for you to die. That was you choosing, hey, I'm going to die now. I'm going to OD. Or you can do it slowly. You can have a bad diet. You can eat a bunch of crap. You can do a bunch of bad things that are unhealthy. And you can appoint your own time to die, which is not God's appointed time for you.
Now, here's proof that everybody dies. Let me tell you something. If Dracula died, you ain't getting out of it. That's right. If Bella died, that's proof everybody dies. It is appointed unto man once to die. And after this, judgment, crisis, evaluation, your life will be evaluated very soon. How soon? What well, depends on what you look like. I can look around the room using my discernment and tell you uh, if uh, you are about ready to kick the bucket. <laughs> yes, sir. And uh, you know who you are. He will rise up at the voice of the bird and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Look at the symbolism here. Nine out of ten people or more, when they die, go to hell. And the demons take them after they die. And you're transported to hell. No one ever goes there on their own. Oh, you're dead now. Oh, I am. What? No, you, you're not saved. Oh, I'm not. Oh, okay. You have to go to hell. Okay, well, that's fine. I'm a, nobody ever goes there on their own. You're, you're dragged there. You're dragged to hell. No one ever goes willingly. Nobody would ever go willingly. It's too horrible. You're dragged there. Okay? Birds in the Old and New Testament were sometimes symbolic for spirits. And after that happens, all these good memories do you no good anymore. Your money's gone. Your friends are gone. Your happy times are gone. Everything you had is now lost. You died, now you've lost everything, including eternity. And most people die that way and go to hell. It's God's will for everyone to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth that there's one God and one mediator between God and men, Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. That's God's attitude, but human beings don't like God's attitude, so they have their own attitudes. And they do their own thing. That's called free will. Well, Jesus said the way and the door to glory is the Greek word is stenos. It's narrow. And Jesus said, and I quote, few find it. Few find it. Few go there. Then he said the road to destruction it's wide and the door is broad, huge. And Jesus said, quote, many go there. Many go there. And what's so funny about human beings is they're so incredibly ignorant, me being one of them. When I was in my 20s, man, I had no concept of dying. I had no concept of expiring. I had this big future ahead of me. I wanted to. I wanted these, this career, I wanted this money, I wanted this, all this success, I want this and that. I had all these delusions, I had all these plans, I had all this, all this stuff I wanted to do, blah, 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 and it went on and on. There was no thought about, wait a minute, I'm not going to be here that long. My life's relatively short. The Bible says it's like a vapor. <sighs> Lots of vapors all over the United States now, right? Now, pot's being legalized everywhere. There are vapors all over the joint. <laughs> and it just disappears. And that's what a human... I had no concept of that when I was a teenager. Didn't even think about it. I never even thought about it. Didn't think about it. Looking back on it, God, I would have given anything. I wish I would have turned my life around the Lord in my 20s. Wouldn't that have been great? I would have loved to have served the Lord for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. I would have, that would have been great. Man, I cannot believe it. I just I just wasted all those years. You know what? I, I just blew it. I was too busy with me. It was all about me. See? I screwed my life up. I was too busy planning stuff, buying stuff, business, money, chasing chicks, this and that. It was all about me. And I wasted all those years when I was young. I didn't turn my life over to the Lord when I was in my 40s. That ain't good. But it's better than being in your 60s. Okay. It's better than being in your 80s. <clears throat> but anyhow, the point is, I squandered 
my young years you know as it says in the Old Testament I pissed them against the wall they just gone I wasted them I lost them they're gone I blew it I heard about Christ and I you know I wasn't anti-Christ I was just too busy with me it was all about me I had my life I wanted my career I wanted my success I wanted my real estate I wanted my stocks I wanted my money I wanted my millions I want this I want that it's all about me none of you are that way I'm just sharing what I'm what what is about me I'm not talking to you directly I wasted all those years and mercy knocked on my door my daughter knocked on my door when I was in my 40s hey dad you're living in sin Wow things changed for me dramatically I'm not even the same person I was then but the point is all those years were just gone and the point of that is most people don't even get what I got mercy in the 40s they waste their whole lives and die and after that there is judgment creases their life is evaluated from birth to death and King Solomon's going oh my god I'm not young anymore and I'm gonna die soon and he was seeing the end it was in sight and I never even considered that when I was in my teens or my 20s didn't even think about it never even thought about it wasn't concerned I wasn't concerned at all chapter 12 verse 6 the silver cord uh oh it's loosed and the golden bowl broken it's talking about the skull and the mind the pitcher is broken and the wheel is broken what's he talking about hey your heart stops pumping and that little connection between the natural world and the spirit world that little cord clicks and you leave your body just like these people said his buddy OD they over OD they died people drop down a weird heart attacks Boop, they're gone that cord and then you drift into the spirit world out of your body and most people when they drift out end up in hell they weren't even thinking about it uh, the opioid crisis textbook example <clears throat> you take some heroin and you cut a small amount of fentanyl and put in it and that's going to give you a high it's going to be incredible super high unless the idiots cutting it put in a little too much which is exactly what's happening all across America the Mexican drug gangs and all these crook criminals they're the people that are cutting this fentanyl you, you got to be very careful with the amount you put into heroin if you put too much in there the silver cord and the person moves into eternity right at that moment they had no intention of dying all they wanted to do was escape their miserable life for 45 minutes hour hour and a half all they wanted was out and now they slip into eternity their lives are wasted because somebody didn't cut it right happening all over the country as I'm speaking to you fentanyl that stuff is spectacular. You can get a high off fentanyl like you can't even believe. Heroin addicts can't even believe it. They're used to having a high. But if you don't. Yeah. Mexican drug cartels and these gangsters, they're not pharmacists. No, they don't work at CVS. And they're cutting and they think they're doing it. You're dead. Then, 
after your heart fails your mind fails the dust returns to the earth and that little silver cord cut and you drift out into eternity for your creases your evaluation sinner or Christian At the moment of conception a miracle happens your inner man is placed in that fetus it's amazing as soon as that sperm clicks into that egg a person becomes an eternal being like God and they never die all aborted children miscarried children are still alive. Why? Because at this moment, the spirit was created in the person, and they are now an eternal being in here, eternity. Nothing can be done to change that ever. It's a miracle of creation. It's unbelievable. Human that's incredible. Isn't it? How the heck does that work? I wouldn't even have a clue That's why they call them miracles. You can't figure out miracles How do sperm even work? How do they know what they're doing? I mean you look at them. And they, they look stupid <laughs> And you're thinking to yourself how in God's name do you know what direction you're going you idiot I mean I have trouble getting to circle K after this service. I'm sometimes I'm so tired. I get in the car and I said care I tell my wife, can you find Circle K? I don't know where I am. How does a sperm know to go from here up there and pop right in that sucker? They look like they're retarded. That's a fact. It's a medical issue. I know all about these things. But anyway, at that point of click, a supernatural, divine miracle occurs. That person becomes a living soul. Literally. Literally. And the body just forms around the person at that point the person's here and Then in the fetus the body then then it becomes a person boop they plop out and but there they go I mean, it's a little slower than that, but basically yeah. boom they're gone <laughs> and Solomon had popped out and gone and now he's he can see the end And he's speaking to us tonight, even though he was in a depression, even though he was chucked full of demons, he's able to help us tonight because he's telling us, listen, even if you're young, listen to Brother Mike, your time is running out. You're on a short fuse. You're not going to live much longer. You didn't hear me. You're not going to make it much longer. You're going to die. You could be the smartest man in the world and I might add this dude was the richest man in the world He was Bezos from Amazon at that time He was on the Forbes list at the top at that time And he ended up like this Depressed lost lonely and stupid This is the smartest man that ever lived Telling us a lot your spirit is someday going to go back to God who Put it in there He didn't actually physically put that there, but he set that system up that creates that That's his system okay. God doesn't run around create every little person, but he did create them through the system he created and That creates the person and that person lives forever as soon as that thing clicks, that person lives as long as God does. It is an eternal human being forever. How about cockroaches? No. You get a bunch of cockroaches. Oh, there's 500 of them just fell out of the mother, right? They start walking around. You see them, you go, you step on them. They're gone. There's no cockroaches in heaven. There's no cockroaches in hell. 
You just go, you hear that? Here in Arizona, we don't have cockroaches. We got them sewer roaches. You ever seen those things? They'll put the fear of God in you. They're weird because they're coming right at you. And you're thinking, wait a minute, you know I can step on you? They don't care. And in fact, I'm backing up. I could smash it. But something about that thing's giving me the creeps. I don't like those bugs. They look creepy. They do. They look like a politician. I mean, you look at me go, holy crap. You know, Jesus, God. And I'll go, I'll give them space. And they kind of look at you when they walk. They act like they own the parking lot. It's weird. There's something sick about them. But even a Palo Verde beetle, if you can kill them, you can't. But if, let's say you dropped a safe on them. They, they don't, they're gone. They're not, they don't have this, the miracle of eternity. They don't have that. They don't have it. They're just dead. They're gone. They're dead. They don't exist anymore. Human beings are not that way. As soon as that happens, that person is an eternal being. They never die. And when they die, the spirit created at that moment, later on, returns to God who gave it. And then, Croesus, the evaluation occurs of that human being. And so what's the conclusion uh, he draws here? Well, looking back on his miserable life, Ablo, it's emptiness, it's nothingness. Vanity in Hebrew means that's, that's nothing. It don't, it don't mean nothing. It's, it's a vapor, a zilch, a zero, a nada. Vanity, vanity, nothing, nothing, says the preacher. Everything is nothingness. Well, that's true in the human world. In eternity, everything's lost, right? Only spiritual benefits in Christ go with you into eternity. That's the only thing that goes with you. Nothing else goes with you. Everything I did for the first 40 years of my life is zilch, nothing. Counseling practice, money, real estate, nothing. It means nothing. It amounted to nothing. I was deceived. The devil made a fool out of me. He pulled a wool over my eyes. He made a jackass out of me. He made me look like an idiot. He told me all these things were important, and I believed him. I believed that it was important. My career was important to me. My future was important. My retirement was important. My, the money was important. Who I was, my status was important. All who I, all these things were important, he told me. And I, like an imbecile, believed him. I was fooled. And now I see it because nothing you do in this world goes with you into eternity but has any value. It's useless. Useless. Everything is emptiness, he says. Verse 9. Because the preacher was wise... He taught the people knowledge. Yes. He gave good azan. Wise people are able to impart knowledge to other people. That's why we go to school. They call them teachers. Right? And they allow you to weigh things back and forth. You know, well, this, this if you add that to it, comes to that. And this has it. Well, wait a minute. Now, which one do you want to do? And you learn to evaluate your situation by discussing things with intelligent people who have knowledge and experience. Duh. It's simple, common sense. Teachers try to fix things. They use proverbs and illustrations and graphics to teach people. So the preacher sought to find out acceptable words that were written and they were upright, even words of truth and stability. The words of the wise actually are like goads. As nails used by masters of assembly. So it's talking about there as like a carpenter or a woodworker. That's all it amounts to. It's the Trump syndrome. You know, you got all these buildings with your name on it, and then you drop dead. What the heck difference is the only shepherd, there was only one person that really mattered. 
and that was your heavenly father and that was it you spent your whole life doing everything for yourself it was all about me everything about me what an idiot what was I thinking what was I thinking further by these wise words my son be admonished making many books a sapphire is a scroll making many scrolls there is no end and much study is weariness of the flesh wow isn't that the truth <laughs> studying some things is good too much study not good right oh that's true in Christianity it's incredibly true learning the gospel and the things of God smart becoming a Bible scholar dumb dumb but it's really good good is it okay. as grandpa used to say so and so was so heavenly minded they were no earthly good Too much study is not gonna, gonna do it. He's saying writing a bunch of books isn't gonna do it for you. Let us hear the conclusion of this whole matter. This the broken down preacher, the wisest and richest man on earth. Here's what he said: Fear God and keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man, which is what he didn't do. What was he doing there saying, Hey, don't do what I do, just do what I say. If you do what he did, you're going to end up in all kinds of horrific trouble. Why? Here's why. God will bring every work into judgment. Greek word krisis in the New Testament. Evaluation. Everything you do will be evaluated. And what else? Oh, no. Even the secret things you're doing. God sees it, makes a note of it, and you're going to get evaluated for it. It's coming from an expert, Solomon. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we must all appear before the Bema of Christ. Now he's talking to born-again Christians, the few that go through this narrow road and the few that make it through that narrow road opening he said few find it we must all appear before Bema everyone to receive the things Prasso they practiced in their body what's he saying there it's just pure common sense isn't it if you do something once that's not something you are practicing Same is true of sins. If you do a sin once or twice, that's not something you're practicing. You're not repetitively doing it. You're just doing it occasionally. You're failing here. You're failing there. It's not a regular practice of the person. Here he's talking about stuff you regularly did in your life. Those things will get more emphasis at the judgment seat of Christ, the Bema, the Greek word means a tribunal. That's amazing. Like a court case. According to what you have done, whether it is good or bad, you're born here and you get saved here. Everything you did, good or bad, from up to here, viscerates. You are already judged. You already had your Bema. We call it what? Calvary. From the time you're born to the time you're born again, God's judgment fell. And it landed on Christ at Calvary. And you were exonerated.
See, he used to be a, a rapist, a pedophile, a murderer, or whatever, but you got saved here, and now you're no longer those things. And God judged you for what you did. <clears throat> pedophile, murderer, rapist, adulterer, liar, cheater, stealer. Okay? God's judgment on that sin fell upon you and missed you and landed on Christ at Calvary. God judged you for your sin on the cross of Calvary. And you were exonerated. You were declared sinless. It's called justification. God declared you not guilty because God's judgment on what you did fell on Christ. Jesus took the penalty for you, what you did on himself, and he paid the penalty for your sin. You're, you hoard yourself out. Jesus paid for it. You were an addict. Jesus paid for it. It's, it's unbelievable. It's, it's incredible. When I heard that story originally, I, I like to faint it. You mean to tell me all these things, every one of them? You, mercy covers everything I ever did, everything I said? Really? Wow, this is the best story I've ever heard. I mean, I hit the lottery. I couldn't believe it. Everything is gone. Wow, everything I did to my parents, everything I did to the wives, everything I did, all of it? Mercy covered all of it? You Really? Yeah. The Bible says it as clear as it can possibly be. You mean the judgment fell on me and it fell on Jesus instead? That's amazing. Really? Yeah, really. What happens now? Oh, your life is rebooted. From this moment on, everything you say and do will be evaluated in another setting. Where is that at? Bema. The tribunal of Christ. And what do they look at? Well, from that point on, everything I did, good. <coughs> everything I did, bad <clears throat> that's a bema. it's a tribunal it's where you're evaluated Croesus is appointed at the man once to die after this Croesus evaluation you get evaluated okay. now Here's what happens here in America, the usual. Sin, 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 saved. Wiped out for eternity. Gone. It never existed. First love. Hallelujah. Heavy duty cry. Oh, trials, tribulations, tank, fizzle, up and down, fizzle. That's your standard American Christian. They fizzle. They have their first love period. That varies days, weeks, months. And then the devil beats them down and then they start sinking. And then they kind of start leveling off. And then it's kind of a yo-yo thing from there on in. They just fizzle on out. Clunk. Die. Give up. Quit. Coast. Different things. Well, tonight you've decided you don't want to do that. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've been listening to King Solomon talking, and you go, man, this is kind of depressing, and Brother Mike's not doing a good job presenting it, so that makes it even worse. <laughs> so now I'm kind of at a downer here. But however, your Christian life from here to, to tonight may not have been too good, okay? But on Judgment Day, Bema, you want to come flying in 
on your game. That's what you're thinking. You know what? I can, I can pick this thing up and close this thing out huge. Yeah, it's, in football, they call it a two-minute drill. You got, you've got a two minutes left to win this game. And you've got, so to speak, two minutes left. You may not be at my age, but maybe you're pushing it, 40s and 50s. Hey, you're running out of time, dude. The clock's ticking on you. And if you haven't been taking care of yourself and you're in bad health, it's ticking louder and harder. You about to go. Thanks for the encouragement, Mike. I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to put this thing in perspective is what I'm trying to do here. I'm not trying to hurt anybody. Matthew 16. Someday the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father's angels. And he will reward every man according to their hopes and wishes. Oh, geez. Wait a minute here. I was hoping he's quoting that right. Because if it was my hopes and my wishes, I'd be getting rewards like you wouldn't believe. I'd be rolling in rewards. I'd make Paul look like a piker. No, it doesn't say that. From the time you're born again to the time you die, somebody's going to look at what you did. You're going to be evaluated. Croesus. And 1 Corinthians chapter 3 says, No other foundation can anyone lay which is laid, which is what? Of course, Jesus Christ. Not Buddha or Allah or somebody else. Mother Mary, it's Jesus Christ, period. Nobody else. Uncompromising. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, he can build in different structures. Absolutely. Gold and silver. Oh, those are great buildings. Oh, now here's stubble and hay. Not too good. Yeah. See, up till tonight, you've been a stubble hay Christian. You've been listening to this home and you're going, hey, wait a minute. I got to turn this thing around. And there's time for me to do it. You know why? I'm breathing. See, when you're dead, uh, I know it sounds like I got a medical degree. If you're dead, you're not breathing. <laughs> if you're not breathing, you're dead. Master's, master's degree coming through. I see the jealousy on your faces, foes. Listen, if you're breathing, you're still alive. That means you can change this thing. You are still alive. You can change it. You don't have to die like a loser, like King Solomon and live in depression and regrets and sorrows and look what I lost and look how bad I screwed up. Nobody screwed up more than King Solomon. He was the king of the screw-ups. He's not even mentioned in the Hall of Fame in Hebrews 11. Did you know that? Didn't even mention the guy. That's how, that's how bad he fell out of it. Wisest, richest man of God that ever lived wasn't even mentioned in Hebrews 11. They dumped him. Why? Well, he sold his soul to the devil. What happened? You got born again. All your sins were eviscerated. From that moment on, everything you did was coming under evaluation. And some of you have been living like I did when I was living in sin. It was all about me. How does this affect me? How does that? And I, Hey, this is kind of off the record. I learned it from my dad. My dad. My dad, I feel so sorry for my dad. He's still alive. He's 90 years old. He just came down with cancer. And my dad was just terrible. Uh, he wasn't an evil person. It was just that, you know, he always thought about himself first. It was weird. Uh, my grandmother, his mother, died when he was 16. She had tuberculosis. And then shortly after that, my grandpa, his dad, he came down with MS. So he, he ended up in the rest home. So my dad, from age 16 on, was kind of on his own. And he worked at a hotel in Macomb, Iowa. And uh, he was a really good-looking kid. 
very attractive man. And guess what happened? Yeah, the he started getting seduced at the hotel. So he started doing the gals and he started picking up demons and one thing led to another and he just became you know, no mom Dad gone. He just became a very self-absorbed person It was it's just what how does this all affect me? And so he, he kind of lived his life like that He had all these broken relationships Starting this failing here start that fail here Everything kind of revolved around my dad And that really hurt my sister my sister to this day still hasn't gotten over I got over it years ago when I turned my life over to the Lord and I saw why he was doing all that and I knew why he was doing it once you know why somebody's doing something you can forgive them yeah as soon as you realize it's not them see the devil took my dad when he was young and so as soon as I saw that I said hey wait a minute my real enemy, the enemy never was my dad it was a monster behind my dad and I saw that same monster behind me. I saw he was my real enemy. So I learned it from my dad. It was everything was kind of all about me. So I just focused on, you know, basically my inner circle, my kids, my career, my this, my that. Almost kind of kind of like a regular person, actually. When you become a Christian, it all starts over. Your whole life reboots right at that moment. You become a born-again Christian. You leave being a child of your parents, your mom and dad. Now your heavenly father is your father, not your parents. And you're in a new family, not your old family. You're no longer a Smith or a Jones. You are birthed into the family of God. And from that moment to the moment you die, you're evaluated on what you did for your heavenly father. And most Christians in America are hay stubble Christians. They're spiritual losers. They're goofs. They're imbeciles. They just do whatever they want to do. They follow their own desires and my needs, like I did when I was living in sin. It was all about me. And that's what born again Christians do. They just kind of, you know, what's in it for me, so to speak. And the problem with that philosophy is it's the polar opposite of Christ and Christianity. When you become a born-again Christian, you're a child of God, and you become a servant of the Most High God. Servants are people who serve. It's not all about the servant. It's all about the person they're serving. So the whole concept from the second birth is a completely different radicalized philosophy. But Christians carry over their philosophy from their sinful life to their Christian life, and it becomes... Spiritually all about me And so they die and on at the Bama they got to face wood hay stuff all, all this other crap and guess what evaluates you Fire You're gonna face the fire Jack Every man's work is going to be fired burnt and then it's manifested after it's evaluated by fire. <sighs> well, stay in a hubble and hay and that, that bur stuff burns up, right? I'll do it for you, Lord. I'll help these people. Is anybody watching me? That stuff burns up. It's all hay. You did it for ulterior motives. You didn't do it with a servant's heart. You didn't do it with integrity. Integrity, oh God, that's a horrible word. I'm gonna commit suicide. Integrity is like kryptonite to Christians. That's like, oh, Jesus, oh, God. Integrity. I don't have to have what? Holy smoke, that's insane. Your crappy Christian is gonna burn up like stubble at the Bama. Fried. Fried. Yeah. <clears throat> See, man looking on the outward appearance, God looks on the heart. He sees your true motivation. So if you're like a politician shaking people's hand, kissing babies, and all that crap, that's all phony. That's a lie. They're just fake. That's all they do is fake stuff. They're all liars. All of them. They're all demon possessed liars. Every one of them. Oh, well, Democrats aren't. No. 
Democrats are burning in this pit of hell and the Republicans are in that one. You know why? That's where liars go. My YouTube channel is never piped in anywhere to wa near Washington. Nobody cares about listening to Brother Mike. But let me tell you something. Your life's about over and you're going to die soon and you're going to face judgment. If you're not saved, you're going to face the great white throne judgment. And everything you ever did from birth to death, Father will evaluate it. If you're a born again, reborn Christian, only from that point on, not before. Not before. From that point on. What you did is going to be evaluated and it's going to be evaluated by fire. So Paul's saying, listen, if you're some Mickey Mouse half-baked lunatic Christian, you got all this hay works, that stuff's going to be burnt to the ground. You're not going to have anything. Oh, you got a gold and silver buildings. Now that's something else. That'll be burned and it will look better than it did before. The true works you do, even, and Jesus was so emphatic about it, if you give somebody a cup of cold water, which really amounts to virtually nothing, but what he's trying to say is even the teeniest little things, God sees it if it's done with a good heart. Yeah. See, once again, we're back to integrity, the kryptonite of Christians. Oh, God. The fire shout, Doc Amazo, test it. The fire tests it. So all the stuff I did from the, when I got turned my life over to the Lord in the 40s, I had wasted all those years, but God forgave me. and I rebooted there after my daughter led me to God, right? So from my 40s on, I'm in my 60s now, for all that, and then I don't know how much longer I got going, but whatever it is, from there to the end, will be evaluated at the Bema. And the stuff I did selfishly, with poor motives, or desire to be seen, or wanting to be whatever it was that had low integrity involved in my behavior, that's going to burn like stubble. And hey, it's gone. There's no reward there. There's nothing. I lost it. Can you imagine having a lifetime of, hey, service to God, and the whole thing burn up, and you end up with nothing. It's unbelievable. But you build something with gold, the fire makes it look better than it was. <laughs> yeah. The fire shall test every man's, hecatos, everyone's work. Everyone. Not one reborn Christian gets out of this. Now, granted, there's not going to be a lot there for some people. Let's say, for example, you go to the hospital and God blesses you with a deathbed repentance. Those are great. I've had a few. Those are fantastic. I'll, God, I'll take them all day. I'll stay there all day for those. That's great. Well, that guy that got saved and his deathbed died, you know, there's not a lot going on there to, at the Bama to evaluate. They just, they were saved for an hour or something. Okay. But... The beautiful part about it is uh, what you did goes on your record and part of your gold you present to the and you did it out of a good heart and did it with pure motives and again with some integrity. And nobody, Ekatos, nobody gets out of it. No one, even a deathbed repentance, gets, gets a crisis and evaluation. Even though there may not be anything there to evaluate. That happened to me one time. I was in a complete state of shock. I'll never forget as long as I live. I've tried over a hundred times over the years. I had my daughter, uh, I had just turned my life over to the Lord. My daughter was still in a coma. Well, I had developed this odd desire to pray for sick people while I was at over at the uh, John C. Lincoln Hospital while my daughter was there. This was you know, back in whenever, when she got hurt, in 96 or something. Well, anyway, uh, I thought, well, 
in my mind I thought I'll just read the Bible to these people. <laughs> you know, I was trying to do something. I didn't really know what to do. So I was just, you know, taking a stab at it. But I was doing it out of a good heart. You know, I wasn't trying to get any glory out of it. And I went upstairs. A, a woman had told me about her daughter who was in a coma. I said, oh, well, I'm, I'm going to go upstairs and pray for her. You know, I thought, well, I'll just go up there and pray and read the Bible. And I go up there and, and, and I started going up there every night. I would tuck my daughter in bed and then 10, 11 o'clock, I would go upstairs to the second floor. This other girl was in a coma. Well, I went up there one night and in the bed next to this girl is sitting a woman who scared me. I come walking in and I got the story on her. She had married a uh, Muslim and she was in Saudi Arabia and they were living in an apartment. She was from America. She was from Phoenix. And uh, a gas heater blew up in their apartment and uh, she was home at the time and she got cooked. I'm not even joking. I mean literally cooked. And when I walked in to see that other girl, I can't remember her name now. I come walking in and I looked over at that bed and I saw her and she was awake. And she was staring at me. She had this look of terror on her face. Terror on her face. And when I looked up at her, I stopped. I was scared. I got scared and I stumbled back. She was so ugly because her skin was like something like a movie. It looked like a movie. And I was, I was stunned. I was taken aback. I just stood there for a minute trying to gather myself. So I stumbled over to the other bed where the girl was. And I was standing there looking at the other girl. She was in a coma. And I'm sitting there thinking, what can I do to help that person? You know, I didn't know what I was doing. So I thought, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll read the Bible to both of them. Yeah, that's what I would do. So every night I went upstairs, I walked into their room, and her name was Jessica. I'll never forget it. I said, every time I would walk in the room, I said, Jessica, Jesus of Nazareth is calling for thee. I read in the Bible, so I started getting my King James going. See? That's how you get your evangelistic career going. You get your King James going. Yeah, that's it. I said, Jessica, every night I would say that to her. I would go to the other bed. I'd open it up. I would read her a Jesus story. And I would read to her. She was in a coma. And then I read to Jessica. She was wide awake, had this look of horror on her face. I kind of got used to seeing her in that condition. I kind of, you know, I'd take a breath and I would say, hey, you can't uh, let this stop you. Come on, you know, man up on the thing. Go in there and do it. You ever talk to yourself like that? Yeah, yeah sometimes you have to talk to yourself because the biggest idiot you got to talk to is you. <laughs> and sometimes you just stop it. <laughs> I talk to myself sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes you're around. <laughs> Every day I come in and then I read her. I remember I read her the resurrection of Lazarus. I'd look over at her. I'd read louder. Ow. I'd start crying. She'd stare at me. Every day, every night she would stare at me. I come in to see her in the middle of the day one time. She's gone. And I say, hey, where's Jessica? What are you doing? The respiratory therapist and then he says she's gone to a better place and he walks out I'll never forget as long as I live I know she got saved I know she did I know that the Muslims murdered her over there and the devil wanted her in hell but her family fought for her and pooled their money here they weren't rich people they got her back from Saudi Arabia to John C. Lincoln Hospital up at Sunny Slope. And I'll never forget as long as I live. I walked in there. A total nobody. I, I just turned my life over to the Lord. I was ignorant. Uh, I didn't know what to do. And God orchestrated that supernatural miracle and then said, Mike's, we got to get Mike going. Let's get him up to see Jessica. So I heard about that girl 
and they put her in that girl's room. And every night I came into her and read her a story. I told her to receive Christ. And this is what he can do for you. Lazarus, woman with the issue of blood, blind Bartimaeus. She, she got all the gospel stories. Can you imagine that? She was in Saudi Arabia dying and going to hell. Ended up getting saved in Phoenix going to heaven. Wow. Wow. Hey, folks, he's a miracle worker, isn't he? First right. Corinthians 3, if any man's work, man, no, remains after the fire, he will receive a reward. If any man's work be burned, he will suffer a loss, but the person themselves will be sozo, delivered from judgment, and it comes dia through fire. So from the time you were reborn to this moment, all that hay is going to be burnt up. It's You wasted all your time doing it. Yeah, I had a lot of hay over the years. Yeah, I get it. I did I did a lot of stuff over the years that, you know, had ulterior motives, didn't have pure, pure motives, had integrity issues. Oh, yeah, I went through all that stuff. Everybody has to go through it. But Jessica is not one of them. Jessica was a real one. What am I trying to say here? No, you are not headed toward hellfire. Yes, you are headed toward Bema fire. Every born again Christian is headed for Bema fire. Every single one of them. Hellfire? No. Uh, far from it. There are other fires, not just hell. And this is one of them. Yeah. Therefore, to him that knows to, to do good and doesn't do it, to him it is sin. In addition to your bame of fire, it will also explore the stuff that you knew you were supposed to be doing and you didn't do. Preachers call them sins of commission and sins of commission. You knew you were called. You didn't do it. Bama fire. You knew you were supposed to be serving. Now, you're too busy. Regrets, sorrows, pity parties, self pity, excuses. Oh man, the devil gives us truckloads of those. He's great at it. He is really highly skilled in that area. But on Bama Fire Day, there are no excuses. You're running out of time, you're running out of your life, and you're running out of excuses. And the least little thing you did or didn't do is being evaluated from this point, rebirth, to this point, you dying, which is not that far off. I'm, I'm not joking. Ask anybody. Is anybody here in their 50s? One, two. Boy, look, there's a lot of them. Yeah. If you're in your 50s, you can remember your 30s like it was yesterday. You know what? I mean, it's just like that. You remember who you were with and what you were doing and a conversation and a smell. I mean, it's like, boom. <clears throat> Wait a minute. My God, that was 20 years ago. That was 25. What is going on? If you're in your 30s, you can remember your teens, your 20s, just like that. I mean, it's just like, click right there. What's the point? It goes so fast. It's so fast. My daughter married a guy. They got divorced last year, unfortunately, but they married a guy that was, she married a guy that was very smart. But he, he was a pot smoker for most of his life. And so his life kind of went into suspended animation. So he didn't get married until he was in his 40s. My daughter was in her early 20s. 
So he was a lot older than my daughter. So he, he had to reboot his life. And he did. He, he got his bachelor's degree. He got his master's degree. Went out and got a good job. Got a, got a real good job today. Good, good salary and everything. He's doing, he's doing great. But he's pushing retirement already. The drugs will do that for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you go into suspended animation when you go on drugs. You start taking them here and you quit taking them there and you're actually back there. It's scary. And believe it or not, emotionally you're back there too. It's weird. You ever, you ever been around an addict? Those dudes are scary because they started taking drugs here at this young age, but they're, now, they're, now they're old, but they're still like a kid, like they're young. It's weird. And they still think like an idiot. You ever notice that? Like a young person does. No experience, no knowledge, no ability to. It's like they go into suspended, drunken animation. It's weird. Hey, you know what? Exact same thing and it happens in mental illness. The person develops mental illness here and 20 years later, they're still there. It also happens with brain injuries. TBI here, 20 years later, they're still a teenager. They still think like a kid. They still think like a young adult. And they're in their 40s. Arrested development. Christians? Yep. Arrested development. The devil says, uh-oh, we lost this one. Oh, man, that's bad. They're born again now. Oh, wait a minute. we got a backup plan. It's no problem. We'll turn them into an American Christian. 25 years later, it's like they were just saved. It's unbelievable. They're still sick and can't get healed. They're still infected with demons, can't get delivered. They're still not doing anything productive for Christ. They're still living an up and down yo-yo Christian life. They're still wrestling with the same crap they did when they were young. Temper problems, depression, loneliness, sadness, regrets. Suspended Christian animation. Thank you, Satan. What are we judged on? Well, your doctrines, your conduct to others, your carnal Christian life, what you say, integrity issues. Personal integrity, your integrity to God, Bama fire, evaluates all of it. What are you supposed to be doing? Well, here's what it says. Let's close with this. Seeing we are compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses. Who are they? Hebrews chapter 11, the hall of fame. The people who did not go into suspended animation as a Christian. Seeing where compass about with such a great cloud of witness, lay, lay aside every uncus, burden, burdens. Get rid of them. Why? Your life is very short. You don't have much time left. And you're headed toward a Bama fire. And the sin which just so easily what? Eucharistus. What does that mean? Suspended animation. Arrested development. It's the sin in your life that caused you to stop going forward with Christ. You were doing good for a while. Things were going well. And then something got in. And now you're stalled. It's stalled out. That's a besetting sin. Eucharistus. You're not going forward anymore. You're standing around. You're kind of moping. You're moving back and forth. You're not running the race anymore. You're 
stalled. See, integrity is the key. You can't run a race like Lance Armstrong and cheat all the time. Christianity, you can't Lance Armstrong it. You can't do it. There's no easy road. There's no shortcuts. You have to face it. You got to face it. What's the worst thing to face? The man in the mirror. Oh. Worst thing to face is yourself. If you don't face him, if you don't face her, you're not going to make it. You're going to get stalled with a besetting sin. Screwed. We had fathers of our flesh that corrected us and we gave them reverence. Yeah. Shall we not much rather be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? Because your spirit, after you die, returns to God who gave it to you. And for some of you, that's a, f a few years or months away. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercy of God, you present your body a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable. To God, which is your logicus, logical, rational service. Hey, wait a minute. You mean to tell me that every sin I ever committed is now gone? I'm a grateful person now. Thank you. What can I what can I do to say thanks? Oh, that makes sense. People are supposed to be thankful when someone does them a favor. Makes sense, doesn't it? Not in our society, but in a regular society, that would make sense if somebody does you a favor. A thank you would be nice. I'm going to change my life around. I'm going to get ready for my bame of fire. I'm going to live a life with character and integrity to God. I'm going to do what's right. I'm going to do the right thing. Oh, that's hard to believe. Why? It makes sense to do that because... God gave his life to save me. Why can't I then give my life to benefit him? I can become a living sacrifice to God. Which is what I've always wanted to do anyway. I just never got around to doing it. Because I had too many besetting sins. I had too many ancus burdens I was carrying around. And I got stalled out. Romans 12, and God said, do not be conformed to this world, but be metamorpho, morph, morph yourself. How do you do that? By anachinesis. You must renovate your mind and how you think. That's what I was doing tonight. I was showing you pre-saved, post-saved, hellfire, bame of fire. I was trying to appeal to your Christian logic. That was my hope. I was trying to help you think, hey, wait a minute, I need to change something here. I can change something here because I'm breathing. And Mike's a scientific genius. He's right, I'm not dead. <laughs> See, if you're breathing, you're not dead. That's in a book somewhere. That's what it says. So that you may do what? Same Greek word we saw eight verses ago, dakamazo, test. This will allow you to test, to find out what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. This guy's helping us. Lord Jesus, please forgive me for not redeeming my time and for wasting my life. There's a Christian praying right there. That's not a sinner. It's a Christian praying. <coughs> Let's pray. Father, I, uh, many years ago, was stunned when I found out I was going to face a Bama fire. I did not know that. I did not know that. And everything I said, 
everything I did after I was born again was being Croesus evaluated. I did not know that. When I found that out, I asked you to help me forgive me. When I found that out, I asked you to help me change my life and transform my life. I asked you to help me get rid of my besetting sins. I asked you to help me remove these burdens in my life that I was carrying. Old grudges and bitterness and ought and negative thoughts and complaints and negativity for others and self ought and self criticism. I asked you, Lord, let me get rid of these horrible besetting sins. Let me get rid of these burdens I carry because a beam of fire is in my future. And I'm going to have to stand there alone by myself. Nobody there but me. And I have to answer for my time after my daughter led me to you and I need you to help me because I cannot do this on my own I must have the Holy Ghost I am by nature a failure I am by nature a spiritual loser I know who I am and so I'm looking to Jesus the author and finisher of my faith and I'm asking you Lord I do not want to waste the second half of my life like I wasted the first half making everything all about me and I'm asking you Lord forgive me I want to change I want to change I truly want to change I don't want to die with nothing I don't want to die enough in nothing and nobody. I don't want to waste my life like everybody else does. I don't want to waste my life like other Christians do. I truly don't. I want. I want gold. I want silver. I don't want stubble. I don't want hay. And I've had that in the past and I don't want it in the future and I'm asking you to forgive me for wasting my life making everything about me and my family and my little inner circle I have got to expand and get out of it and I'm gonna do it tonight I'm gonna to repent of this besetting sin and these burdens I'm carrying I'm gonna release them to the Lord and I am gonna get out of this stinking mess with the power of the Holy Ghost and God's Word at my side. I cannot do this myself. You know I can't, Lord. You told me I can't. But I can do it with the Holy Ghost. He will help me. He will lead me and He will save me. I know He will. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Is anybody living a hay and stubble Christian life huh? come up here and I want to pray for you if that's you if you're a hay and stubble person come up here we're gonna pray with you tonight if you're a gold and silver person God bless you thank you for coming to the meetings thank you for supporting the ministry thank you for your donations the donation boxes are on the door love you thank you for caring about us <clears throat> if you are a hay and stubble Christian you are stumbling through life and on the and the bame of fire is going to burn hey buddy the bame of fire is going to burn your mickey mouse christian life up you're going to end up with nothing or near nothing on judgment day and you know it you suspect it you can feel it you have wasted several years since you've been born again and you know after you were born again, whatever that was, whenever that was, 
When were you saved, sir? What age? Years ago, I guess. I gave my life to the Lord. What year? How old were you? I was probably about 22, 23. 22, and you're how old? 78. Okay, this gentleman here was, is 22 when he got saved. That guy right over there? 22. He's 71. Okay. So that what's the math on that? Huh? 50 years. That's 49 years that guy's been a born-again Christian. Right? So before that age, he was sinless. His sin's gone. Right? Washed in the blood. After, for 49 years, that man there, and again, I don't know, I'm not criticizing him, I'm just using an example. That man there is going to face a Bama fire. And 40, if he dies right now, 49 years of his life go into that fire. And what comes out on the other, will help a lot of good things. But since he's still alive, there's potential for enormously great things to come out at that fire. It's not hellfire we're going to face. It's another fire. And every one of us are going to face it. And there's no getting out of it. And if you've got hay and stubble, it's better to burn it up tonight and go for the gold. Am I right? And whatever you're doing, whatever I was doing, it wasn't worth keeping. It isn't worth it. Your eternity is more important than what you're doing right now. That's right. right, preach? That's right. It is. I don't want to end up at the bame of fire and have all my crap burned up. I don't want to do it. Do you? No, you don't because you wouldn't be standing here if you if you wanted it. I said if you're if you want to get rid of it, you said you you would come up and you would repent. You're gonna repent right now. Come on, let's pray. Sweet Jesus, I'm so sorry for what I've done. Every year I've wasted. Every stack of hay I heaped up in my Mickey Mouse Christian life, my pathetic ministry filled with ulterior motives and ego and lust and pride and vanity. Vanity, King Solomon said, is emptiness. It's emptiness. And I'm repenting of it right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, that besetting sin I ran into several years ago it called my, caused my Christian life to stall out. It stalled. I'm going to repent of it right now tonight. I'm going to repent of it tonight right now and tell Jesus I'm sorry. I'm going to repent of it right now in the name of Jesus. If you're a minister, the bame of fire is hotter. It's hotter if you're a minister because you're held to a higher standard, the Bible says. You will be... You will face a hotter fire if you are a minister. Ministers are in worse shape than people who are not ministers. Come on. You better repent of it right now in the name of Jesus. You better repent of it right now. Come on. Just repent of it. Let that guy go. Let, it, let them co-workers go. Come on now. Just repent of it. Wasting your life. Come on. I repent of it in the name of Jesus. I repent of it right now. I am so sorry, Lord. I'm so sorry for living in fear. Oh, my God, living in fear and sorrow, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Who's that? Who's that? Kim? She been here before? What's wrong with her? Oh, that's... You don't repent tonight? Yes, I know. And you left. Why'd you leave? I actually got bad. Huh? I got bad. Yeah, I know. Of course you got bad. The devil's not going to let you come in and get healed. Yeah. Come on now. Hay and stubble. You're going to get rid of it right now. You're going to get rid of it right now, aren't you? And that fear spirit. Feeling jump right in there? That's a fear spirit in there. You're going to let go of it. Mama. Yeah. Lord, bless this woman right now in the name of Jesus. Lots of people have criticized her and dishonored her and disrespected her and used her. We forgive all them people. We are going to forgive all those people, Lord. Forgive this man of God, Lord. For using things to make himself feel better. That was a terrible sin. He's going to repent of it tonight. If you don't face it, you can't get healed. If you don't face it, just repent of it. Just repent of it quickly. Yes, Every ugly man that ever touched this body.
and used it and <laughs> used her time and energy. Come out of there, hurry up. And used her energy and her time and her money and used her body for orgasms. Every ugly man, every one of them, go and come out of that body right now. Every one of them, I release every one of them. Every negative thought, every doubt, every self-hatred, every criticism, every second I spend hating my looks and my body, I repent of it right now. I repent of it all right now in the name of Jesus. Hay and stubble, I bind your power in the name of Jesus. Hay and stubble, I command you to come out in Jesus' holy name. Hay and spirit of fear, come out of that body right now. Spirit, spirit of fear, let's go. Come out. Take a breath and blow. Come out right now. Come out. Breathe. Just blow. Come out. Come out. All the bad, all the bad men. Let's go. Come out. All the bad men. Let's go. All the bad men. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come out of there right now. Let's go. Come out. Come out. Negativity, low self-esteem. Come out. Right now. There he is. Spirit of fear. I command you to come out. Hurry up. Come out right now. Quickly. Come out. Hurry up. Come out of there. Come out. Come out. Fear. Come out of that body. There he is. He's right there. Tell him to go. That's him right there. Come out. Demon of fear. Come out of me. Come out of me right now. Come out. Right now. Come out of me. Come, come out of my throat. Get out of my body right now. Come out, you demon of fear. Go. Insecurity. Come out right now. There he is. He's coming up right there. That's him right there. That's him right there. Come out. Spirit, come out. That's him right there. Come out. Come out of her. Come out. Get out of my body. Say it. Get out of my body, spirit of fear. Spirit of fear, I command you in the name of Jesus. Come out of my body right now. Come out of my body, I said. Stop stalling. Come out of my body right now. Stop stalling. Stop stalling, I said. Verbal abuse and criticism. Come out. Verbal abuse and criticism. Come out. Low self-esteem. Come out. Low self-esteem. Fear of man. Fear of men. Fear of my future. Fear of living. Fear of dying. Come out. Demon of fear. Come out. I see him right there. Come out. Come out. Come out. Every ugly man that has laid a hand on you comes out tonight. Name them. What's their name? All family curses come out. I don't know. Husbands. Family curses come out right now. Family curses come out. No, witchcraft. Go ahead and repent of it. Jesus, I'm sorry. Jesus, I'm sorry. Say it. Jesus, I'm sorry. Oh, God, forgive me. God, forgive me. Come out of there, you witch. Come out, you witch. Come out, you witch. Take a breath and blow. Come out, you witch. Go. New age. Familiar spirits. Come out of her head. Come out of her head. Come out of her body. Familiar spirit. Come out. Familiar spirit. Come out. Right now. Come out. Come out of her brain. Hurry up. Come out of her brain. Come out. Come out of her brain. Jesus, I'm so sorry. God, forgive me. Please forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. Spirit of infirmity, killing me. Come out. Spirit of infirmity, killing me. Come out. Get out of my head. Here he comes. Come out. Come out of there. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Keep yawning. Come out. Come out. Come out. Spirit of fear, I command you to come out of me. Come out. Evil spirit, come out right now. Spirit of infirmity, killing my body. Come out. Self hatred and low self esteem, come out. Come out of there. Come out. Come out. Come out. 
Come out. Get out of my body. body. Snake, come out of my spine. All Kundalini spirits from church, come out of my body right now. Come out of my spinal column right now, you rotten spirit. Come out of my throat right now. Come out. Come out, devil. Come out of the woman of God. Keep coughing. Come out. There it comes. Keep coughing. Come out. Come out of there right now. Go. Come out. Keep coughing. There he comes. Come out. Go. Go. Hold that. Come out. Come on, everybody, right now. Come on. Come on. Pray harder. Come on, sweetheart. Pray harder. Who hurt you? Your family did? Okay. Lord Jesus, I forgive every one of them. Just name them right now. Just name them. I forgive all my family. Come out. Come out of there. Come out. I forgive every one of them. Come out. Come out. Come out of there. Don't you stop. Come out right now. Hurry up. Spirits, come out quicker. Come out quicker. Go. 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 Come on. I want my family's demons out of me. Go. Come out. Come out. Come out. Spirit, obey. Spirit, obey. Obey. Come out. All my family's demons out. Come out now. Out. I forgive them and I release them. I forgive them. Come out. Come out. Come out and go. Keep coming. Come out quicker. Come out quicker, I said. Get out of the stomach. Witchcraft and sorcery. Come out. New age. Ouija boards. Light as a feather. Come out right now. Come out right now. Tarot cards. Seances. Spirit world. Astral travel. Come out right now. Come out. Every demon from astral travel. Come out right now. Spirit. Fear. Come out. Fear from my family. Come out. Fear from my family. Come out of there. Right there. Come out. Come out, spirit. Come out of there. Come out. Come out. Quickly. Come out. Come out. Come out. Get out of my feet. Get out of my feet right now. Get out of my spine. Come out of my spine. Go, spirit. Come out. Come out. Come out right now. Come out. New age. I repent of it. I forgive them right now. I forgive them. Everything they did, I forgive them. I forgive them. I forgive them for everything they did. Come out right now. Come out of that body right now. Come out, I said. Quicker. Come out. Go. Go. Come out. Come out, you witch. Come out, you witch. New age. Come out of that body right now. Come out. Hurry up. Come out. Go. Come on. Get that spirit of fear. Rob. He's right there. Feel him in there? Get him out right now. Come out of me. Come on. There he comes right now. Here he comes. There he comes. That's him right there. Keep coughing. Come out. Hold that. Get out of there. What are you doing there? Come out. What are you stalling for? Come out of that body right now. Hey, get out of there quicker. Come out of there. <laughs> faster. Come out quicker. I said faster. Come out. Drugs. Come. Drugs. Come. Use pornography. Come out of that body. Porn. Alcohol. Go. <laughs> Cursing and swearing, go! <laughs> Anger and rage, go! Go! Get right now, get on here. Come out right now, get out quickly. Come out quicker. Come out quickly. Come out. Come on now. Hey, how you doing? Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. spirit of fear. You lying spirit. I bind your power right now. Say that. I bind your power right now. You get out of my body. You get out of my body in Jesus' mighty name. Get mad. 
Yell. Go on, start yelling. Not like me. Come out! Come out. a girl. Come out, I said. Come out, I said. Go quicker. Get out of there right now. You stinking low self esteem. Failure. Loser. Come out right now. Hurry it up. Get out of body right now. Keep coughing. Come out quicker. There it comes. Come out quicker. Let's go. Get out of that body right now. Hurry up. I command you to come out of here. Come out. Hurry up. Hay and stubble. Hay and stubble. Come out. I'm wasting my Christian life. Come out of me right now. Come out of me right now. Wasting, wasting my Christian, my Christian life. life. Go. Go. Right now. I need What's some going prayer. on with her? Now, this is Kim, but I need some prayer. What happened to you? Um, the, the gardeners where I live poured glucose fight, glucose fight, uh, Roundup all over my place. I went down hard. But glory to God, I'm back up. But I had neurological system, so I want it out of myself. What I've been casting out. The gardeners where I live, I mean, uh, yeah, they, they poured Roundup, glucose fate everywhere. Help her first. Help her first. Take a big breath. Take a big breath. Come out. Come out right now. Come out. Come out right now. Go. Come out right now. Go. Go. Come out. Stop it. Right now. Pervert. Come out. Evil. Evil. Come out of this body. I repent of it right now. I repent. Everything oh, I said. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Get out of my head. Get out of my head. Get out of my body right now. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Go. I said, come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Go, I said. Go. Come out of my body right now. Go. Come out! Go! Go, I said! Come out! Go! Go! Get out of the body right now, go! 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 Spine, uncoil! 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 Come out of this spine! Uncoil! Come out! Come out! Uncoil! Come out! Come out! Negative thoughts, lies, negativity! Go! Come out of me! Go! 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 Satan, go! Satan, go! Satan, go! 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 Come on, buddy, right now! Go! Hurry up! Faster! Come out quicker! Come out! Faster! 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 Come out! Come out of my body right now! Go in Jesus' holy name! Go in the team of Jesus Christ! Evil wickedness, come out of me! Evil! Evil! Evil, come out! Evil! Yeah. Evil! Abuse! Bad men! Lord, you are demons! Go! Go, I said! Come out! Come out! Come out! Hatred! Self hatred! Self hatred! Self hatred! Come out! Self hatred! Self hatred! Come out quicker! Quicker! Fear! Self hatred! Go! 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 You get out of my head right the second, you rotten demon of hatred, God. Did you hear me? The demon that caused me to live in sin. I hate you. I hate you. The demon that stole my years, wasted my life. I hate you. Come out of me in Jesus' holy name.
I said, come out now. Come out right now. Get out of my body right this second. Come out. And poison, come out. Poison. 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 YouTubers, put your hand on your body. Put your hand on your body. Just repent of it. Put your hand on your body. Put your hand on your body. You pervert. Come out of my body right now. Come out of there. You, you demon of homosexuality. I bind your power. Come out of that body right now, you pervert. Come out in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Father God, giving the gift of hate for sexual perversion. Giving the gift of hate. Give it to him, Lord. Help him. He hates it now. He hates. He hates it. I hate it in Jesus' holy name. Lord Jesus, forgive me. Say that. God, forgive me. Lord, have mercy on me. Say it. Lord Jesus, forgive me. Help me. Say it. There you go. Good. Say it. Say it. I shouldn't talk to me. I just started praying for him. Is that your son? It's my son. What's the diagnosis? It's autism. Oh, he's got autism. Now listen, uh, have him sit down here. Uh, sit down. What's his name? Toby. Toby, Joshua. have a seat. He's 13. Toby, 13? Okay. What's your name? Esther. Esther. Oh, okay. Esther. Hey, listen. Oh, those autism demons are super powered. Who? Oh, okay. Those uh, those autism demons, they usually come down from the family tree. I need my son free. And uh, when did he get hit? I think it's from birth because I think it's from birth. Like yeah, got hit in the womb. They come down from the family tree, and usually in the tree, up the tree there, there's either some severe sexual perversion or witchcraft or masonry or something like that up the tree. Okay. I have no clue, but from my, uh, from my uh, father's side, there must be like a demonic uh, occultism. From his side, father's side, I don't know anything. What kind of demons is on that side? On uh, my father's side of the family, I would say... There's Where are you from? A lot of killing Nigeria. You're from Nigeria? Oh. Okay. Raise your hands. What's your name? Esther. Esther. Father God, I've got beautiful Esther standing here, and her son got hit by demons when he was in the womb. Somebody in the family tree, come out of there. There he is. He just jumped. Get him out of there. Get him out. Right now. Come out. There he comes. Come out. Right now. Come out. Somebody in her family tree had ugly, evil spirits, sorcery, witchcraft, something evil, perversion. Come out of there right now. Come out and repent of it. Self-hatred. Negative thoughts. Something hit him in the womb. The spirit is in the family trees, hiding in there. He got in somehow. And we don't know how he got in. So, Father God, we're asking you to go back at least, if you have to, ten generations. Ten generations. Go back in her family tree. Ten if you have to. And this ugly demon, this monster from childhood of someone's life, came down the tree and took her son when he was in the womb. How dare you do that, you rotten devil? How dare you cause this family heartache and sorrow and misery, particularly Esther? She loves the Lord. She has a good heart. And you put a knife through her soul. When, she, when you took her son. I command every demon from his father, the father of her son, to release the mother right now. Come out. Every demon from a bad dad, come out. Come out. Come out of there. Come out. 
What's his dad's name? Emmanuel. Emmanuel, in the name of Jesus, come out of the mother right now. Come out of there. Emmanuel, come out. Let her go. Let her go right now. Come out. Come out. Go. Come out. Out. Come out. Let her out. Come out. Emmanuel, you let her go. Every transfer spirit from her grandfather, her grandmother, her great grandmother, great grandmother. Come out. Come out of the mother right now. Come out of her. Out. Out. Out in Jesus' name. Out. Out. Every spirit that transferred into the son from the mother. Come out. Grandmother. Great grandmother. Come out now. Every Nigerian curse. Go. Every Nigerian witch. Go. Every Nigerian false religion. Go. Any demons from Islam. Go. Go now. Go. Get out of that body right now. Come out quicker. Come out quicker. Quickly. 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 Out. Out. Quick. Come out. Come out of there. What's wrong with her? She has witchcraft. Um, witchcraft. She did it? Yeah. What'd she do? Um, Just repent of it. I command adultery to come out of my body right now. Every man who touched my body leaves me now. Leave my womb. Come out of my stomach. Every poison from witchcraft. Poison. Come out. Poison. Every spell. Every vow. Go. There it goes. Go. Come on. You got it. You got it. That's yeah, the you fight hard. You got your prayer line. Come on. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. Don't my life. Comes to an end tonight. Go. 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 Right now. Out. Quicker. I forgive all these people that don't like me. Go. All these people that are jealous of me. Jealous people. I forgive them. Out. Out. Jealousy. 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 Out. Jealousy. Out. Jealousy, come out. Go. Jealous people who hate me. People who dishonor me. People who trash me. Go now. Out. Get out of my stomach. Come out of my spleen. Come out of my kidneys. Kidneys. Come out. Come out. Go. 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 How's that brain demon doing? Dumb, stoop, come out of there. You stupid, uh, ignorant, come out, come out, come out of them. 
Come out of your eardrums. Go! 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 Out of there. Out of his eyes. Come out of your eyes right now. Go! Out of his eyes. Out of the eyes. Hurry up. Go now. Go now. What do you need? What do you need right now? What's wrong with you? I don't know. What's blocking you? Something's blocking you spiritually. What is it? I don't know. We need no no. Come out of there. What do you want God to do for you? I talk to God all day. He's not talking back. Now, what do you want him to do for you? Your, your koinonia is blocked. Koinonia. Block. Now the block is always on you. Never on that end. The signal comes there and it's blocked. It stops. Get out of his eyes right now. I said, come on, that body. <laughs> there he is. Come on, that body. What's blocking it? You speak in tongues? You speak in tongues? No. Never spoken tongues? Yes. Come out of there. Come out. Come out. Go. All right. Okay, now. You, are you a Christian? Yes. You born again? Oh, okay. So you're eligible for everything since you're born again. Right? You already know that. Okay. Now, just to repeat after me, okay? Raise your hand. Close your eyes. Yeah. And uh, you feel that fear demon in there? Timid, shy, feel that? You feel that right now? Uh, when you was a kid, did somebody hurt you and beat you up or something? Were you bullied as a kid in school? Okay, did, uh, were you uh, weak and small as a kid? Did the other guys make fun of you or take advantage of you? Yeah. Okay. Now that's a spirit of rejection. And that got into your brain when you was a kid. And he's still in there, locking your point in ear, your relationship with God. You follow me? Yeah. So just repeat after me. Borra Baba. Kola Sati. Vekova, Andoria, Amusha Veka, Bashuvi. Now, did you happen to notice that I was um, speaking in tongues? Did you notice that? Sounds like it. Did you, did you notice I was speaking in short syllables? No. No. Okay. For example, California is four syllables. Heaven is two syllables. Boy Shabbat in tongues is three syllables. You notice that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now this time I'm going to speak and you follow me again and notice if you're, see if you can notice that I'm using different syllables when I'm speaking. Ko Shabbat. Ura Mashe. Velo Basia. Boka Ba. Notice that? Okay. Now you just repeat after me only this time. All born again Christians, they already have their gift of tongues. It's in their spirit, man, because the Holy Spirit's in there. He's right in there. The Holy Spirit has everything. Right? I mean, nobody would argue with that, but it's got half a brain. So that means you already have the Holy Spirit because you said you were a Christian. So by definition, you have the Holy Ghost. And you also have all your gifts. You just haven't released it. You already have them. You just haven't released them. So to release your gift of tongues, all you got to do is relax and just kind of repeat it. Just kind of release it out. Koryamasha. Garo Shateva. 
Valdu, Vasim, Mandu. Any syllable, there's no wrong answer. Any syllable works. Now, notice how you were giggling? That's that shyness coming out. Notice that? That's him. That's a that's that rejection demon from being bullied in grade school. He makes you feel introverted, in, inferior, insecure, unstable, unsure, that kind of sense. And it transfers to almost every area of the person's life. They go kind of shaky almost everywhere. Right? So this time let's try it again. Just repeat any syllable. Koya, Vasha, Bor, Shamuti, Ve, Alu, Vashama, Ondara, Vasi, Ondara, Vashanda, Yendora, Vasi, Vala, Ora, Vara, Vashanda, Ravi. Just like that. Good. Any syllable. Ora, Mosha, Vaki. There's no wrong answer, so you can't do anything wrong. Kondara Mashamba, Velo Vashati, Ora Vashana Nomu, Ora Baba Vashanda. In 1 Corinthians 14, it says, He that speaks in tongues speaks directly to God. I'm talking directly to God right now about you. Ola Mashandora Vasheda, Abo Shabi, Ora Moshabaka. Yandara Vashe Molabi Abu Bashava Alu Bashavela Andara Boshi Oravava any syllable Andara Moshandara Vasi Dava Say it Kola Vashi any syllable any syllable Kola Vashila Elo Vasha Mama Andara Vashiva The reason I'm showing you this is because this will unblock or uncork your blockage. Gura Vashanda, Velo Vashamura Vise, Adu Vashava, Ondoro Moshava, any syllable. Good, just like that. Go. Gura Vashimula Vava. Where you been? She's been winning some battles and victories. Where you been? I got really pumped. She got pummeled. Winning, she's been winning some battles. Yeah. And battles, what have you been then doing? I got pummeled. What? I won some battles, then I got pummeled. And then after you got pummeled, what did you do? I've been trying to figure this out. I went to church, and then I was going to another uh, Middleton. Went to Middleton for the women's, trying to understand and read and trying to do everything, and I felt overwhelmed. Overwhelmed, totally, and I had no support. Uh -huh. We were talking for a couple of months. Where's yeah. that guy that was with you? Jeff. He's been taking care of my mom, helping my mom. Oh, he's my still kids. around? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We're housemates, separate. Okay, now all you have to do is repent of trying to figure everything out yeah. and just receive it. Why did I get hit so hard with demons? What'd you expect? Would, if, I, if you was a demon, wouldn't you have done that? I don't know. I mean, I'm gone. You don't know? I wouldn't have. Oh, I mean, I'm gone. If you was a demon, wouldn't you have done that? Isn't that I what guess. they do? What, what do you mean you guess? They don't have a right... Yeah, it's like, I'm the Lord, you can't keep doing this, I'm standing, I'm changing, and uh, I gave it all, I'm like, this is it, I but know this is it. Hold on a minute, you weren't changing, you said you got overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed. Okay, yes. you weren't changing, you were overwhelmed, that's I a different... I gave up. You oh, gave up, okay. Shots. No, I quit no, my no. shots. She's telling no. you about I'm she medical. Was. I was taking. She was addicted to Benadryl. A Benadryl. No, actually, it was, well, yeah, it's not Benadryl. It, it, Go ahead. Benadryl. It, actually, it was Benadryl and dexamethasone. I yeah. had to take. I'm allergic to dexa, so I had to take Benadryl. Then I had to take Valium to keep myself from reacting because my cortisol and pituitary are zero. Are you still doing all that stuff? No, I got rid of it. That's okay. Nice. Now, now what's the problem? I got the shots. The only thing left is, and I and I can let go of the pain medicine. Okay, but Easier. what's the spiritual problem? This is like this purple went all around my face. What what, what did? The purple like the, I could see. And then when I looked at somebody, it would change the person's look. She's seen demons. Yeah, and I'm being attacked badly. Uh huh. Really what are they badly. doing to you? My stuff is being like. I'll set something there and it'll, it'll be all Like witchcraft. I think so. I don't know. I'm never, I'm not involved in witchcraft. It keeps calling this big eye. You were taking a bunch of drugs, weren't you? Is that witchcraft? I was on medicine, yeah, a lot of medicine. You saw a red eye? 
No. A big eye came down. A big eye I was came down? I and mining Illuminati. <laughs> and Illuminati. And the next thing I know, it was coming back. Yeah. Because I looked, I looked at the money thing online to see what the eye meant. And then I wanted to see who the founder was. So that in my head, I know that it wasn't my ex-fiance involved with Satan's me. He wasn't involved with it. I was trying to understand. So I'm not blaming somebody else for something that is not Do you speak in tongues? Yes. Okay. Stand up for a second. Now listen, you think too much. Okay? You're thinking too much. Yeah. You're trying to figure things out on your own. You can't do that. You're so jacked up. This this is a Holy Ghost job. Your your case is bad. This is complicated. Okay. Go ahead. We'll speak it out. Okay, stop. Now you're t you, that's a, that's a good gift of tongues, but it's kind of blocked. It's blocked. Yeah, it's blocked. Okay, you're using the same three phrases over and over. You notice that? You click back. They click, click, click. Notice that? Okay. Now just repeat after me. Boya baba. Boya baba. Belo shati. Belo shati. Vakuba. Vakuba. Andoria. Andoria. Manuma. Manuma. Did you notice that I was using uh, short syllables? Yes. And different syllables? Yes. You notice that? Yes. Well, glossa is a language just like any other language. Spanish, English. It's made up of syllables. California is four syllables. Right? Yes. Hallelujah is Boraba. But you were running your syllables together. You notice that when you were doing yes. it? That's the equivalent of study stuttering in English. Is it? Yeah, it's blocking your prayer life. Oh my goodness. It's holding you back spiritually. That's been it. That's what it is. Yes. So yes, instead of trying to figure it out. Your tongues is not coming from your mind. It's coming from your spirit. So my spirit's blocked, right? Hmm? Is my spirit blocked then? Your anointing's blocked because yes. you're stuttering. stuttering. It's easy to fix. Yeah. Oh. And just repeat after me. Boya Baba. Koya Shama. Shebo Shaki. Beko Baba. Dono Mashandraba. See how easy you were doing that? Yeah. Now watch this. You repeat after me and then you take off on your own language. Good, keep going. Switch syllables. Switch syllables. Good. Good, just like that. Switch syllables. Kura shandara vasite. Louder. Good. Excellent. Good girl. Good. Honda mashambara mashandara vasite. Good. Crank it. Good girl. Good. Go. Hey, how you doing? Mike, what you doing here for? Why are you here? So, oh, I would hear, um, well, I hear God's voice, but I hear demons too. You hear voices? Well, I hear, I hear demons. And In your head or out here? In my head. Inside? What are, I hear voices. What are they saying? Well, they just, they talk to you like... What do they say when they talk? Um, they'll say like scripture, they'll tell you to like... Oh. But they'll, um, someone prayed for me. Someone prayed for me and... When was that? Um, February 27th. Or what, where's that, another church? Yeah, I was at the prayer pavilion. Prayer pavilion up on the, up on the hill? Yeah. Okay, who, somebody put their hands on you? It was Kevin Zeta. Who? Kevin Zeta. Oh, see, so he, he's a prophetic, right? Well, he was, he was there that night and he oh and then, and then the next night my bed starts shaking yeah now and after, what happened was you picked up a transfer but that guy that guy's a prophetic right is that a prophetic route 
there. Well, he, uh, what was he doing up there? He died and went to heaven. Yeah, yeah. Th back. Those are Kundalini spirits. Those are familiar spirits. You picked up a transfer. I had heard them before. You heard them before? Then did they change after that? No, he told it to me. And then after that, like my bed starts shaking, and then it like gets worse. And, like, and then when did you first hear a voice? Oh, I, it's been like long time, but then I got free from it. A couple months ago or years ago? No, like when I was a kid. Like, oh, a kid? It was like a fantasy. But then like, oh. as I, like last year, I wanted to get free from stuff. And I didn't know like that was, like I didn't recognize it was demonic. Um, but last year, like, I fasted, and, like, things I didn't even recognize, like, the Holy Spirit would show me, mm -hmm. and I got free, but then, like, this year, it's like, I got hit by another, mm -hmm. like, yeah. Listen, there's church demons in there, and there's, it's a witchcraft, it's familiar spirits. Okay, okay. Have, have, when you went to church, did people put their hands on you and pray for you? Um, yeah. And were you abused as a kid? Beat up, verbally abused, sexually abused as a kid? But I mean, I don't, I don't know what you would call it. What they do to you? Discipline. Oh, discipline. No, that's not abuse. Discipline. Did somebody verbally abuse you, like criticize you and run you down and? nag you and nitpick you, mother and dad, anybody? Did you do that to yourself? Um, well, I did, like, like, my mind is different now. Like, mm -hmm. after last year, like, I got free from so much stuff. What was left after last year? Well, I got, it was like I was completely free, and mm -hmm. then, like, it came like they're like these thoughts and it's all like it's voices and yeah those are spirits because like it's so if i if it, my mind wanders like the shaking like kind of like doesn't shake as much and if i like don't go along with it then it gets worse yeah he gets worse it's a person living in your head it's a demon. yeah there's a person living in your head he's doing it there's nothing wrong with you. Well, I know there's nothing wrong He's with doing it. But I want it He's doing to it. go away. Yeah, and the, the reason I was asking this question, I was trying to figure out how he got in. <clears throat> you know how he got in. Well, so last year, um, I destroyed the work of the devil over my family. And then it's like, like a lot. I'm not sure. You're, let me ask the question again. Do you know how that thing got in there? Well, because I allowed it. How? Because, like, I didn't stop it. Like, when the thoughts came, like, I didn't stop it. Right away. And I would just, like, let it until, okay. it was, like, my house was on fire. Like, okay. Did you repent of that? You already repented of it? You told the Lord you're sorry? And what's that demon's name in there talking to you? I don't know what his name is. But what does he usually talk about? He just torments me, like by saying what? Like to make me feel like yes. um, I'm, like I need to apologize for everything and like guilty and like. Sounds like a low self-esteem or rejection or something. <clears throat> Not rejection, but like because I want to know God's voice and he like talks to me about. Like, he'll, like, say scripture, and it's, like, twisted. Yeah, the demon does. Yeah, that's his job. It's some kind of church spirit. Have you gone to, like, Katie Suter or Patricia King or these other outfits and had people put their hands on you? Um, no. I don't know who. Well, I think I've heard of her, but I don't Have you gone to... Okay. Do you know if anybody at a church put their hands on you and downloaded something? opened a portal or anything like that over Well, so my family, like, it's their church that has, like, I destroyed some stuff over there. Well, what kind of church was, was your family in? Well, they're... What's the name of it? Um, it's 
not in the U.S. And they're, um, Where's it at? It's in Mexico. And they just believe some things that are like... Demonic? I think so. What are they? So they believe the Holy Spirit is the mother of Jesus. Oh. Are they Catholics? Or no. Catholic mystics or something like that? But there's like this prophet, and he's like the prophet that Moses said, like, but it's Jesus. But yeah. He says Did you Jesus renounce all that crap? What's the name of that religion? Um, they call themselves Los Redemidos. Los Vedos Midos? Los Redemidos. They're Los like the redeemed. Oh, okay. But I went there and I destroyed, like, some stuff over them. Because that's my family. Did they know you did it? Well, I told my dad. Did he tell them? Well, because I talked to my grandpa. So my grandpa was an evangelist. And my uncle's a pastor. And my cousin's a pastor. And now they have, like, this going. In that group? Yeah. And did they know that you were trying to destroy stuff in that group? No, but I stayed above my grandpa's house. Okay, do you know if any of them put a curse on you? Did that coincide with the voices? Well, so I got free in like December. Uh huh. And then it was when, it was like maybe like January, February that I started. Like, like started, started hearing. Yeah, again. But it's different. Like, oh. see, the thing, though, is that before, like, it was bad. But then this time, like, I was like, oh, it's not so bad. But I was very wrong. Like, because it wasn't, like, as, as bad as before. But it's, like, worse. Because I think, it's like, I just want it to leave. And it, uh, it's, like, strong. Yeah, it's strong. And it came, it started when? December? I'd say like January and February because I got free. Where were you in January and February? Well, I came back from Mexico. Oh, Mexico. So, and is that when you were down there trying to put... No, so I was there in October and then I came back. In like January? I, so I went there in October. I came back November 1st. I went back in January, talked to my grandpa, and then came back in January. And that's when it started. Yeah, it's, it's like some that. demon from Mexico, right? It's like what I destroyed over there. Yeah, why were you trying to destroy that? Because it's evil and it's over my family. And it's like God sent me there because I hear God's voice. What, does God talk to you in your head? Yeah, he talks to me through the Bible. Does, like does, a talk, does he ever speak to you in your head? What's he saying? Um, well, he'll tell me, like, to, sometimes to do things. Like what? What's the last time he told you to do? Um, the last thing. Last thing you uh, heard him tell you. Because, like, it's confusing because I don't know if it's God or if it's, like, demonic. Yeah, so that, that's telling you it's not God. But when I read the Bible, I know it's God. The Bible's God, but when you're hearing from God, it's not God. It's a familiar spirit. Now, here's the problem. When you listen to those voices, that's the same as saying, I'm okay with you. Okay. Let's pray now. Lord, uh, what's your name? Rochelle. Rochelle? Oh, Lord, I got beautiful Rochelle here. She came to the service tonight, and she's in deep trouble. She has a familiar spirit in her head. And this thing came from Mexico, and he's angry that she went down there and tried to fight spiritually when she shouldn't have done it. And she's been listening to voices in her head that she thought was you, and it turned out to be a familiar spirit. Because the Bible says God is not the author of confusion. And this spirit is confusing, and these voices are confusing. So that means she inadvertently is practicing witchcraft. She doesn't want to do it. She got tricked. Lord, I pray right now that you will give her the gift of hate. Jesus said you cannot serve two masters. You must hate one of them. She is serving two masters. She hears the voice of a, what she thinks is God. Then she hears a demon voice from Mexico. 
both these voices we renounce in Jesus name and we command their power to be broken over her mind and she receives the gift of hate right now from you Lord and she hates the spirit from Mexico in her head and she hates this fake Holy Spirit talking to her when she reads God's Word that is you Lord when she hears a voice talk to her, that is them. And she's going to repent of it right now. I repent in the name of Jesus of listening to voices in my head, any voice. God does not speak to me in voices in my head. He speaks to me through his word, and that's it. From this day forward. How do you know? What did he say? I asked you what he said earlier and you couldn't remember. You were sitting there, well, I think, what did he say? Well, like when I pray, like it's the what did he say? that brings things to your remembrance. Okay. When did that happen? What did he say? Well, I would go out and tell people that Jesus loves them and like he'll lead me and guide me to people. And sometimes I pray for them. Okay, that's not him saying something to you. He's not talking to you. Correct? That's an impression. A spiritual impression. I'm asking you a question. Is he talking to you? What voice is he saying? You mean audible voice? What kind of voice are you talking about? Not with my physical voice. Just like you see like dreams and visions. Okay. If you have a spirit in your brain, you can't trust your dreams and visions. Can you? It's risky. Right? Yes, and you have a demon in your head, so you can't trust any dreams and visions right now. You got to wait till you're completely cleared out before you go there. You're going to get caught. But I still believe that God does speak to us through dreams. But that's got nothing to do with you now. You've got a demon in your head. It doesn't matter what God does. We're the, this is our reality here. You've got a monster in your brain and you can't trust anything right now. He's smarter than you are. That thing is much smarter than you are. You're dumb compared to him. You understand that? You're like retarded compared to him. He's smart. He fools people all the time. I've had a couple hundred ministers come to me for counseling over the years who were just completely fooled by demons. They're smart. Now from now on, you're not going to take any words from God until you get him out of there. If you do, you're going to be sorry. He's going to hurt you. This thing's not playing around with you. He's coming for you. You got into Mexico. You started something you shouldn't have done. Because you didn't have God. God didn't tell you to do it. You didn't have any support. He did? What did he say? What did his word say? Um, that he, if you have it, I'll read it. So he sent him to the land of his fathers. That was Nehemiah. Tombs, that was Nehemiah. And then after that, I read in the Psalms how David says, My body is weak from fasting. You can destroy the work of the devil You can't do any of that stuff if you've got a spirit in your brain. Nehemiah and David are not you. You got tricked. No, you did? Far from it. He got in your head. He's paying you back. Listen, your, your ego is running away from you. I'm warning you. Okay, now things are going to go bad for you. When they go bad, call, call me back and come back in, okay? So I can help you. I'm talking to you. You're not getting it. Listen, you're, you're a t-ball player. And you're in the big leagues now. 
This is dangerous. You're not Nehemiah and David. It's not, it's not working. Is it? Of course he did. You think you're destroying the work of the devil with a demon in your head? Come on. Why is he after me if I didn't do anything? Because you tried to do something. Yeah. Yeah. You should. You shouldn't have done that. Well, there's nothing you can do about it. You don't attack it. You don't just go up there by yourself and do it. You got to use wisdom. Those are powerful demons in Mexico. You're talking about a cult. That's a satanic cult you were telling me about. The Holy Spirit was Mother Mary. What was that? What they say he was? Oh my God. Wow, that's a, that's a, listen, honey, you're out of your league. Telling you. You're deceived. There's nothing you can do about it until you handle it correctly. What you're doing is not working. Is your family free? See? I told you. They will be if you do it, do it the right way. What you're doing now is not working. I mean, I have the proof it's not working. A, your family's not free. B, you picked up a demon. And you're in trouble. This is not the way to do it. You do it when you're completely delivered and set free and you go about it the right way, using wisdom and knowledge. I don't know the right way. I don't know that situation. But this thing here has got to come out of your head or you're going to be in trouble. These demons cause mental illnesses. They're dangerous. This thing's not joking with you. You know, you, you, you got out of your league over there and you stuck your finger in his face. And they sent somebody to pay you back. Right? I mean, he's talking to you. Why not? Why can't he stay? Well, no, you better not let the devil. I'm trying to tell you that thing has to come out. How do you know that? Because I've had the Holy Spirit. I've had God. Like you don't just let the devil just destroy people. No, but your your spiritual warfare has to have wisdom. It does. Okay? And well, not your kind of wisdom. It has to have real wisdom that re that has fruit. Okay, yours doesn't have fruit, right? Your your family's still in bondage. They're still in the cult, and you've got a monster in your head. Whoa! Time out. This is not what we do. It's not over, but I'm, I'm warning you, this thing is going to make you over. He's not playing with you. This thing's real. Okay? This thing's real. He's smart. He'll talk like Jesus. You won't know the difference. He'll start talking to you like Jesus tomorrow, telling you to do stuff. Well, yes, you will. You won't know the difference. He's smarter than you are. Ma'am, listen, you don't know the Word of God. You just told me you thought you were Nehemiah and David. No, I didn't. I said I read in the Bible. Yeah, what's that got to do with you? Why did you assume that Nehemiah had something to do with you? Because he spoke to me through what I he, he spoke to you? God Who's he? How did God speak to you? How did he do it? Did he, did he tell you in your head, hey, that's you, go do that? Yeah, he speaks to you, but not every bit of it is you personally.
right? But not all of it's you personally. I mean, it's, uh, I read in Acts where Paul said, uh, hey, look over here. He went over and pulled a guy out of his wheelchair. Is that what you do? You run around pulling people out of your wheelchair? Because you read that? No, you, hey, come on. Use wisdom. Anyway, none of that matters anymore, does it? Nothing matters. Except getting him out of there. You better make that your number one goal in life, or you're going to be in bad trouble. I know these demons. They're, they're nasty. And don't let anybody put their hands on you and download or pray anything over you anymore. Too risky. You don't know where that person's been. You pick up transfers. I've had a hundred people like you in my office before. They go out and do these things for God. They think they're serving God. They're not. They're walking into a trap. And they're in trouble. These brain demons are scary. They talk to you and they tell you to do stuff. Some of them are vulgar. Some of them are really vulgar. They curse and swear and they <clears throat> drives you, drives you nuts. But the scary ones are the ones that sound like Jesus. The person thinks God's telling him to do something. And it keeps going bad. I got a friend of mine that might be able to help you. His name is Scott. Okay? He's really good with these kind of cases. If you, want, if you change your mind, you want to see him, let me know. What's his last name? Bitcom is his last name. Scott Bitcom. I'll give you his phone number if you want it. My card's out there on the counter. But hey, if I was you, I'd make this your number one priority. Out. That's some monster. Hey, your family has nothing to do with you. You better. You got to get healed first. Your family's in deep trouble. You better get healed first to save them. If you don't get him out of there, you're not going to help your family. Like you've already done. You already you already went down there and did something and it didn't work. Correct? If it didn't do anything. What did it do? You tell me. We don't always see it right away. Well, we do. We certainly do. We see that right away. It started in January. And we didn't see anything there. This is, uh, this is April. You may not see it because you're physical. But it doesn't mean that something didn't happen. But you don't know it did. Well, you know that happened. I know that God's word is true. God's word is true, but God's word didn't say, go down to Mexico and curse no, those people. No, but it says in Isaiah that this is the fast I've chosen to, to loose the bonds of wickedness to let the press go free. My family's oppressed. Mm -hmm. Are they free? They will be. Okay. Well, they're not now, so your focus now is get him out of there. Yeah, you got to do it. He's, I'm telling you, he's smart. He's a killer. Cold-blooded killer. It's a familiar spirit. It's witchcraft. It's a religious demon. He's super smart. Smarter than you and me. Lots smarter. Hmm? So how do you get rid of I don't have one, but how do I get rid of them? I get the person to see what they're doing, and I get the person to turn on them and see exactly how they're beating them. You're not there yet because you're hearing God speaking to you and you think that's God talking to you. So it's going to take you some time to see that ain't God talking to you. Well, I know that this thing like tries to make me think that. Yeah, of course he does. He's trying to take over your mind. He wants control of your mind. That's what he's after. Because you have a good heart and you're a good person. He sees you're, you're a good person. He knows you have spiritual potential. But you don't have the knowledge or experience to apply it. 
So he's trying to take advantage of it. Because he's smarter than you. You're playing checkers, he's playing chess. No more voices, no more God. Stop. Just get him out. That's the next thing in your life. Get him out of there. Yeah. Come on. How's she doing? Yes. What'd you do? With what? With my tongues again. Well, it sounded good when I left. What I happened? I want to make sure that Good. Is that good? Yeah. Well, Using so syllables. You said you want him for your spine. Yes. Can you, would you help me with my spine? Hmm? My spine, my hips, my one leg keeps pulling shorter than huh. the right leg. Now, what's causing that? That's a spirit. Well, no, which one? Like or what? Oh, which um, spirit? Both hips and knees are going along. And so they keep, they keep going like Yeah, now when you were here last time, you were standing up walking, remember? I was, yeah, I was walking, but not without And then what happened? I still can't walk without it yet. No, I mean, how, what happened after you were walking here and then you left? How did it go back to that? It, it's just the, the uh, having to switch, take my medicine and... My legs would swell up, and it would get real, like a lot of swelling, and I had to take shots in the back, and I'd already had surgery back here, so there's no place, and so it... So it all that made it worse? I want to be honest with you, too. It was addiction to using it. Well, it was an addiction. I had to take it. Why did you take it? Was she taken? You weren't supposed to be taking... I had to take it. Take what? Uh, the dexamethasone or Benadryl for the, the adrenal pituitary, but I quit. It's totally. Cause the psychosis? Well, I was having demonic issues coming against me from other stuff. He can't when we, be honest here with Mike. I know. I can't. I've matters. talked to Marty. This he is knows. the safest man here. What? what? I know. I had the appointment. I had an appointment. Oh, thank you. And I came in to talk to you. Yeah. And, and did, did, you, did you change anything? We went through. I have no way to be able to get my body to. I'm not able to function like I need to be. Okay, I understand that, but I mean, do you spiritually make any changes? I didn't know what, what? else to do. Actually, yes, I started to. Yeah, I started to. Okay. I got really lost. My, I lost my mind. Literally lost my mind. I was away. I mean, I went crazy. I was totally insane. Totally. And that happened after we saw you? That, yeah, that was actually. And how did that happen? What caused it? I was, I was casting out, and this spirit just kept coming and just trying to pummel me, pummel me. And I'm dealing okay, that's what they do when you fight back. Okay, that's normal. I did. Right? And I fought back. I took up my sword. I took up my shield of faith, and I'm like, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ. And okay. I'm trying to fight back, and they keep. I went through my money, I went through all this stuff, and then I'm getting these spirits. Money for what? I went through the, the money and I gave it up to God. No, no, no. Um, and then the money I went through and I took the bills and I said, God, this is Illuminati on it. And then they're throwing stuff at me. Who had money. Illuminati on it? What Illuminati? No, the, the money, the all seeing eye on the dollar bill. What about it? They're trying to put this stuff as if I'm a member of some satanic group. They're throwing stuff at me. That's that? not me. Who the did that? The spirits are throwing them at me. They threw, they threw money at you and you thought it was no, Illuminati? They, I felt the coin go in the back. I felt... I felt it. I felt, and like I shut my eyes, and like I could see it. They're tormenting spirits, tormenting. Well, well, I don't understand what they had to do with money. Your money. What happened? I was counting it. You were see, counting money. I was counting it, and I get, I gave it up to God, and I asked God. What do you mean? What do I do about my time? Ten percent, because I'm on a social security fixed income. Uh huh. And I have to give ten percent. Who told you that? Like, give 10%. Right? Where did you get that idea? Uh, Where did you? Right? Okay, so then you Is told God you had wrong? to give 10%. Then what happened? No, I'm asking God, do I have to give 10%? What, do you, what are you God saying? Says, what happened? This is where I'm getting confused. Is, is teaching. Is Some what, people are saying this. What, do, what does tithing have to do with your medical condition? Sowing your way, you know, sowing your way, giving it to God, you know, the Lord. 
commenting on the ones, all of it. Great that we, you know, honored by, or loved by neighbors like hell, and love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, body, with all of it. Okay, now, ma'am, uh, I'm trying to find you're, you're in a living in a world of religious delusion. That's what I don't want. You're out of your mind. That's why not. None of that stuff means anything. Uh, I've seen people get healed who don't tithe and don't keep any commandments. Can you tell me that? Yeah. Right. I, don't I sure can. No. It's, money has nothing to do with anything. Tithing has nothing to do with anything. You can tithe if you want to. If you don't, you can do offering. It doesn't matter. All that matters is love. That's all that matters is love. See, and that's what you really want. That's what you're missing the most. And that's why you don't understand. That's why you're in delusion. Because you, you, also, you already tithe. See, just close your eyes. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Forgive me for all this religious dogma and condemning myself for not meeting commandments and requirements. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. The number one commandment is love. I already told Brother Mike that. You're supposed to love the Lord your God. And you love me. And I receive your love now. And I receive your love now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Take a big breath. I love you. I love you. See? Another one. Here we go. I love, I love you. you. Here we go. Good. See? Holy Spirit. Good. Thank you, Jesus. Heal. I love heal. Love heal. Ramoshaba. Love heals. Love heals. Love heals. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Good, good. There you go. Tell him you love him. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. I love you. Love. I repent of money and Illuminati and coin demons and everything else. I don't care about that. All I care about is love. I love you. I love you, Lord. You love me. I love you. Good. There you go. All right. Now try your tongues again. Good. Very good. Yes. Great. Great. Take it again. Big breath. I love you. I love you. No more religion. I love you. I love you. Oh, uh, love you. Love you. Love heals. Love heals. Love delivers from demons. Come out. Love heals. to it and you're singing a love song because you love it. Good. 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 Holy Spirit, I love you. Re bure re 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 bura. Re bure re 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 bura. Lord, I love you, and I place all these medications in your hands. I love you. I place my body in your hands. Unda re bure busha bure. Alula bura bura. Oh, Lord, I love you. 
good. Singing in tongues brings in the anointing. Good, sing it out. Sing it out. She thinks too much and tries to figure everything out too much. She doesn't love enough. She thinks all the time. So I'm trying to get her just to love. Hey, skip the religious stuff. Tithing and Bible. Skip that stuff. Just, just love it out. Sing it out. There it is. There it is. Sing it out. Sing it out. 